Hi guys, good morning to all the CA intermediate students, CA intermediate uh, students basically who are writing their exam in the May 24 attempt. Now, if you are a student writing your exam in May 24 or might be if it gets extended by chance to June 24, May or June 24, whenever you are writing your exam, CA intermediate taxation May, the GST paper which is there, we are going to talk about all the amendments which are applicable for the May 24 exam. Now, first thing first, who are required to watch these amendments? Now, if you are a student who had taken our classes, might be for the May 23 attempt or November 24, November 23 attempt, or even if you have taken our classes for May 24, I will recommend that you go ahead and watch these amendments. Now, November 23 and May 23, though, must watch these amendments. May 24 students who had taken these classes, taken our classes, which were recorded specifically for May 24, Although 90% of the amendments were covered in the class, one or two amendments here and there, uh, which the ICI now has released the statutory update, have gone ahead and told that you must go ahead and study this amendment. So those amendments also I'll be going ahead and covering. So even if you have taken our classes for May 24, you must watch this amendment. Trust me, watching the amendment means at least 10 to 15 marks in your pocket. And hence, I will recommend that you must go ahead and watch this amendment whether you have taken our recent classes November 23 may 23 classes or before that you must be watching this amendment done sir let's go ahead and start with the amendment now second thing uh, sir in this uh, amendment uh, this booklet which you are going to use where will we find this booklet this booklet you can go to see rameshsuni.com rameshsuni.com may free resources under free resources ca intermediate May 24 folder will be there in CA intermediate May 24 folder you will find this amendment along with this if CA may enter or CS inter students who are there those students also can go ahead and uh, watch these amendments let's go ahead and get it started everyone over here CA inter GST related amendment now I've gone ahead and included the amended charts also so basically if you have version 5 chart book and now you want to go ahead and make amendments in your versions of uh, five chart book. Now, whatever amendments or additional chart I've gone ahead and included in the version six chart book, those chart also has been included over here. All the amendment ka crux small summary has been written so that you can refer them quickly. Chapter wise, I've given the amendment every section wise. I've given all the circulars and notifications which are applicable for your exam have been covered in this amendment. So let's go ahead and get it started. You have to go to ramesonia.com free resources, CA intermediate May 24 folder. In that you will find this statutory update material statutory update slash may, uh, amendment material for may 24 you can go ahead and download it and use it now the first three pages which are there are basically the index but in the index you will be able to see for every amendment the crux is also there so one day before the exam when you want to quickly cover all the amendments the first three pages will help you in going ahead and quickly revising the amendments and going for your exam so this you can go ahead and refer to one day before the exam done sir point is clear so only three pages to be referred now sir old syllabus was there now new syllabus has come what are the changes that has come in the old syllabus c intermediate taxation may gst used to be only 40 mark now the gst is 50 marks ka paper so we'll be going ahead and covering all the amendments or additions which have happened because now they have given 10 marks extra so whatever the additions are there now before you go ahead and start this amendment listen to me carefully before you go ahead and start watching this amendment you must go ahead and watch the accounts and record tds and tcs chapter and place of supply ka chapter which i have already uploaded on my youtube channel those three chapters you must watch it before only then you should go ahead and watch this amendment because in those chapter whatever the amendments or any addition had to be done or whatever linkage from that chapter will come it will be necessary for you so first Go ahead, the new chapters which are added, accounts and record, TDS, TCS, place of supply, those chapters also you watch. The notes for that chapter is available in free resources, CA Intermediate May 24 folder as additional chapters, additional chapter notes. And this uh, chapters ka video also has been uploaded on YouTube. So please watch them before starting this amendments. Done, sir. Up, along with that one section number 95 used to be there and that was not applicable for your CA intermediate exam now that section number 95 ka section only has been made applicable so we'll be going ahead and talking about that also so without going ahead and wasting any time let's get it started 
फर्स्ट फर्स्ट चैप्टर नंबर वन विच वॉज देयर एज इट इज इट इज देयर चैप्टर नंबर टू में वॉट आर द वेरियस अमेंडमेंट विच हैज कम चैप्टर नंबर टू वेन यू यूज टू गो हेड एंड सी दिस चार्ट वन मिनट आई रोटेट इट एंड कीप जस्ट ए मिनट एवरी वन आई रोटेट द चार्ट ओवर हियर नाउ इन द फर्स्ट फर्स्ट चैप्टर सप्लाई में वी हैड गॉन एड एंड लर्न ऑल एक्शनेबल क्लेम्स आर आउट ऑफ सप्लाई means all actionable claims will not be supply of goods but only lottery betting and gambling was there lottery betting and gambling pe i told you gst will come but here they have gone ahead and told it now actionable claim other than lottery betting and gambling used to be there now they have told actionable claim other than specified actionable claim it means on specified actionable claim ka supply gst will come sir what are these specified actionable claim see lottery betting and gambling they have retained now they have gone and added three more things in specified actionable claim it means on supply of specified actionable claim gst will come remember theek hai betting was there gambling was there lottery was already there now they have told casinos baba you know casino where people put money casino takes the money and you can do betting now casinos also has been included in the definition of act actionable claim and on that gst will come horse racing baba horse racing happens on horse racing also gst will come and online money gaming online money gaming means sir this uh, pokerkhelo.com dream 11 online money gaming you put money and online money uh, online gaming happens where you put money and you win that online money gaming whoever is supplying that online money gaming is also actionable claim on which gst will come so now remember actionable claims are goods but supply of all actionable claims are not goods only specified actionable claim pe gst will come specified actionable claims are betting gambling lottery betting gambling and lottery was already there bgl now along with that they have gone ahead and added casino horse racing and online money gaming on these three things also gst will come please make the change in your chart book over here in paragraph number 6 done sir this point is clear other than that there is a circular which has come a new circular which has come on food and beverages now food and beverages which are supplied in cinema hall now they have gone ahead and told over here what is the circular circular means a clarification for an example you went to a cinema hall you book the ticket when you book the ticket or you book the ticket online and along with booking of the ticket you did not buy any popcorn or you did not buy any samosa etc you told food and beverages whatever i want to eat popcorn chips or pepsi etc i will go and buy it in the cinema hall only when the break will be there i will buy it over there now question came was what if ticket and this food and beverages are provided as a combo that you buy ticket 300 rupees ka ticket plus if you buy chips popcorn now only you will get it at 100 rupees and they give it to you at 400 rupees together only if you buy it together it's a composite supply and it's a composite supply and what they are going ahead and telling on that the rate of gst which will apply will apply of the ticket on the ticket ticket means basically they have given you a service of supplying of service of exhibition of cinema baba when you go to watch a movie no the person who is going ahead and allowing you to see movie he is giving you services of exhibition of cinema and for that you go ahead and pay him now along with that if he has made a combo and given you of food and beverages basic popcorn chips etc he has combined it together and given you then in that scenario remember it will be a composite supply taxable at the rate of ticket what was applied on the ticket theek hai sir on the whole supply it will apply but supposedly you went to the cinema hall you bought ticket separately and later in the break you thought i'll buy popcorn chips etc separately then ticket wala ticket pay rate of gst will be applying that will be supply of services of exhibition of cinema that rate will apply and on food and beverages 5% rate is applicable so it will be taxable as restaurant service and 5% will apply so if they are supplied independently then baba remember food and beverages is restaurant service as long as it is supplied independently so ticket pay ticket ka rate will apply means supply of cine uh, exhibition of cinema and food and beverages pay food and beverages ka rate will apply but it bundled together and it satisfies the test of composite supply composite supply i have already told you sir composite supply means two or more individual supplies they are naturally bundled together and supplied in ordinary course and one is principal remember in that scenario they are telling principal supply ka rate will apply that is supply of services of exhibition of cinema that rate will apply on the whole price whole thing which they have gone ahead and charged for the movie as well as the done sir this point is clear after that one more circular has come this circular i had not uh, 
given in the chart book version 6 but now the ICI has given the circular so I thought okay for three intermediate student I thought earlier that they will not ask you but they have gone ahead and told this sir what is this circular listen for an example I am the holding company I am holding my subsidiary company ka share why am I holding subsidiary company ka share so that I can have a effective control on my on a company I am holding supposedly 51 percent share of a company so I am the holding company of that company now holding company just because it is holding the shares of the subsidiary company is it providing any services they have gone ahead and told just because some holding company is holding the shares of the subsidiary company it will not be considered as supply just because you are holding the share holding the shares means holding the securities and securities is neither goods nor service so if holding company is holding the shares of the subsidiary company that will not come under the definition of supply and just because you are holding the share there will be no GST if holding company actually provides some services to the subsidiary company then GST will come. So they are telling activity of just holding the shares of subsidiary company by the holding company per se cannot be treated as supply of service by the holding company to subsidiary company there is no supply no GST. But what if the holding company actually provides some services to the subsidiary company which is coming under section number 7 supply ka definition if actually some service is provided on that service GST will come but just because I am holding the shares of my subsidiary company there is no supply done by the holding company to subsidiary company there is no GST I hope this point is clear that's all was the amendment in your chapter of supply schedule 3 entry number 6 now they have told actionable claim other than specified actionable claim which is lottery betting gambling Horse race, casino and online money gaming on all this, these are actionable claim on which GST will come. Only on this actionable claim GST will come. Other than that, clarification with regards to food and beverages supplied at cinema hall. If services of exhibition of cinema, that is the ticket along with that food and beverages are supplied together, then it's a composite supply. Whatever rate was applied on your ticket, that rate will apply on the total supply. But if both are supplied independently, first you bought the ticket, later you bought food and beverages, then food and beverages pay that restaurant services ka 5% only will apply. It is not a composite supply. And the next one, just because holding company is holding the shares of the subsidy company, it is not a supply. If unless actually the holding company is going ahead and giving some services to the subsidy company, if the holding company actually gives some services on that GST will come just by holding the shares of the subsidy company, there will be no GST. Supply commandment is done over here. Now, the next chapter over here is the charge of GST ka chapter. Charge of GST ka chapter means, sir, what are the various amendments which have come? Listen to me very carefully. I hope you guys have the chart of charge of GST. If you don't have it, you can take it from here. Listen. Section number 93 used to go ahead and talk about notified services on which GST will be paid by the recipient under RCM. Here, one entry used to be there that central government, state government, union territory or local authority other than post, airport or port, immovable property and transportation related service. On this, I told you forward charge mechanism will apply. But other than this, any services when they are provided by the government to a business entity, business entity ka last year turnover is more than registration limit. I hope you guys remember I had linked it with the exemption via chart. Then the business entity used to pay GST under RCM. But here I had gone ahead and told you further now what is the amendment over here amendment is PAIT may IIT is now there means Indian Railway ka services they have gone ahead and excluded that Indian Railway ka services per reverse charge will not come sir why actually what used to happen Ministry of Railway Indian Railway which is there is a central government ka department Ministry of Railway ka services pay when they used to provide the services to business entity business entity had to go ahead and pay the GST under RCM but what will happen is if they have to pay the GST under RCM, Indian Railways never used to get the credit of that service. If any input service was there of that input credit never used to be given to Indian Railways. Now they have gone ahead and told Indian Railways ka service pay forward charge mechanism will come. So remember this point Indian Railway is going ahead and giving services to business entity or Indian Railway is giving services. Remember unless the service is exempt forward charge mechanism will always apply Indian Railways only will go ahead and charge GST and that is why it has been excluded from reverse charge and they have told Indian Railways ka service pay forward charge mechanism will apply further 
सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट रेंटिंग इमोल प्रॉपर्टी रजिस्टर्ड बिजनेस एंटिटी रजिस्टर्ड बिजनेस एंटिटी यूज टू पे जीएसटी अंडर आरसीएम हियर आल्सो दे हैव टोल्ड सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एक्सक्लूडिंग इंडियन रेलवे सर व्हाई दे हैव टोल्ड एक्सक्लूडिंग इंडियन रेलवे बिकॉज इंडियन रेलवे इवन इफ दे आर रेंटिंग इमोल प्रॉपर्टी टू एनी बिजनेस एंटिटी दे विल चार्ज जीएसटी अंडर फॉरवर्ड चार्ज रिवर्स चार्ज मैकेनिज्म इज नो मोर एप्लीकेबल तो इंडियन रेलवे का सर्विसेज पे फॉरवर्ड चार्ज मेकेनिज्म हैज बीन मेड एप्लीकेबल एंड हेंस फाइव एंड फाइव ए में यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट न्यूट्रिटी लोकल अथॉरिटी एक्सक्लूडिंग पी ए आई टी वॉज देयर यू मेक इट पी ए आई आई टी इंडियन रेलवे का सर्विस पे ऑल्सो रिवर्स चार्ज विल नॉट कम फॉरवर्ड चार्ज मेकेनिज्म विल कम अदर देन दैट फाइव ए में रेंटिंग ऑफ इमोल प्रॉपर्टी वेन गवर्नमेंट वॉज गिविंग टू रजिस्टर्ड बिजनेस एंटिटी रजिस्टर्ड बिजनेस एंटिटी यूज टू पे अंडर आर सी एम नाउ दे हैव गॉन एड एंड सिंपली टोल्ड ओवर हियर दैट रेंटिंग ऑफ इमोल प्रॉपर्टी बाई द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट फॉरवर्ड चार्ज मेकेनिज्म इंडियन रेलवे इफ दे आर रेंटिंग इमोल प्रॉपर्टी इंडियन रेलवे का केस में दे हैव टोल्ड इंडियन रेलवे सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एक्सक्लूडिंग इंडियन रेलवे बिकॉज सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट का डिपार्टमेंट इज मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ रेलवे विच इज इंडियन रेलवे ऑन देयर सर्विसेज फॉरवर्ड चार्ज विल कम एम रिवर्स चार्ज विल नॉट बी एप्लीकेबल डन सर दिस पॉइंट इज क्लियर अदर देन दैट तो आई हैव रिटर्न दिस पॉइंट ओवर हियर ऑल्सो ऑन द टॉप सेइंग सर दे हैव टोल्ड ओवर हियर एवरीवेयर excluding ministry of indian railways excluding ministry of railway indian railway baba ministry of railways is also indian is also known as indian railway remember indian railways ka services pe now gst is under forward charge mechanism done sir this amendment is done theek hai other than that about one uh, director related services they have given one circular let's understand the circular over here here you remember director giving services to the company company pays gst under rcm yes sir we remember for this one more circular has been now provided sir what are they telling in the circular see over here circular is going ahead and telling that services supplied by director of a company or body corporate in his personal capacity to the body corporate what will happen so sir i am a director in a company i'll tell you i am a director in a company i am going ahead and providing services to the company as a director as a director i am providing the services to the company you already remember this circular which was there earlier yes sir if i am an employee then neither supply of goods nor supply of service but if i am a director in a company i am giving services to the company and company is deducting tds under 194j then company has to pay gst under rcm on the director wala service now what if i am the director in a company i am given some services to the company which is in my personal capacity which is in my personal capacity then what will happen it is not as a director might be i had one commercial building which was there and the company told me please give me this commercial building on rent i went ahead and gave it on rent not as a director in my personal capacity i gave it on rent to the company see if you are giving services to the company you are an employee of the company then your service is neither supply of goods nor supply of service no gst this was already clarified in the above circular but if you are giving services to the company as a director and company deducts tds under 194j then in that scenario company will pay gst under rcm on that amount which is paid to the director here one more thing you have to remember now that sir if director is giving services to the company as a director and company deducts tds under 194j then to company will pay gst under rcm but what if the director is giving services to the company in personal capacity if the services are given in personal capacity then remember one thing might be director gave any other service or might be renting of immoal property one commercial building was there director went ahead and gave the building on rent to the company then remember in that scenario rcm is not applicable director only will go ahead and charge gst under forward charge provided the director is liable for registration they have told over here services supplied by director of a company to the company in his personal or private capacity such as renting of immoal property not taxable under rcm only services supplied in the capacity of a director of that company or body corporate it is taxable under rcm i hope this point is clear i'll tell you the summary over here i am a director in a company i gave services to a company i am and company is going ahead and paying me salary on 192 the tds is deducted under the income tax act then baba these services are neither supply of goods nor supply of service no gst no gst theek hai sir 
But if I am the director in a company and company went ahead and paid me an amount and deducted TDS under 194J, then Baba remember company has to pay GST under RCM. But supposingly I am the director in a company, I provided services to the company in personal capacity, not as a director. Then Baba remember RCM will not be applicable. In that scenario, company doesn't have to pay GST under RCM. Any other service provided by the director to a company, not as a director in personal capacity, might be I had a building which was there. I gave it on rent to the company. Commercial building was there. I gave it on rent to the company or might be any other service I gave to the company, not as a director. Then remember forward charge mechanism will apply. I hope this point is clear to all of you. Yes, sir. This point is clear. This was the circular which had come. I have gone ahead and explained you the above and this circular together. Done, sir. This point is clear. Here you can also write and keep that uh, PAI. IT immovable property along with that you can write Indian Railway Indian Railways ka services pay also forward charge mechanism is applicable please be very careful about it done sir point is clear now one section number 95 has been introduced let's go ahead and first understand section number 95 properly and then whatever the amendment is there in section number 95 I'll explain you Chalo, to understand section number 95 section number 95 says what section number 95 says Government will go ahead and notify some services. The intrastate supply of that service tax will be payable by the e-commerce operator and all the provision of the act will apply to the e-commerce as if he is the supplier liable for paying the tax. Sir, what do you mean by this? Let me go ahead and quickly tell you. All of you know Ola, Uber, etc. Yes, sir. Supposingly, there is Ola over here. There is one person, supposingly Ram. Mr. Ram, Ram wants to go somewhere. Mr. Ram wants to go somewhere. Okay. Ram went ahead to Ola. Ola directed it to a person. He is the uh, person who is having a car. He will, he, he will come and drop you. Okay. So here, he is the recipient of the service. He is the supplier of the service. And this is the e-commerce operator. Online e-commerce operator. E-commerce operator means who runs a e-commerce facility basically you go to ola ola is a e-commerce operator who has a e-commerce platform okay now here they have gone ahead and told we will go ahead and notify some services on which tax will not be payable by recipient also under do you think you mr ram will pay gst under rcm ram is telling hey, i will not pay supplier do you think this cab drivers etc will pay gst under rcm no the government thought better is to go ahead and tell ola ola Whenever through you someone is going and booking a cab, etc., you do one thing. You collect the GST from him and you pay the GST under section number 95. It is told that you pay the GST to the government. So now, supposingly you booked a Ola cab, Uber cab, might be you booked Rapido. You know Rapido, everyone? Yes, sir, bike taxi. So, Baba, always remember you booked a auto, you booked a Ola, Uber, Rapido, bike taxi, then remember one thing, always Ola, Uber, Rapido, who is the e-commerce operator, they will collect the GST and they will pay the GST to the government. I hope this point is clear to all of you. That is what is being told over here. Now, government have notified category of service, not for all services, only for some notified category of services, government have told the e-commerce operator will pay. Now, the first, first service which is there over here is transportation of passenger by radio taxi, motor cab, maxi cab, motorcycle. Here one omnibus word used to be there that is now being deleted or any other motor vehicle. Any other motor vehicle means this cab, auto rickshaw, e rickshaw, etc. is there. So, I will tell you once again for an example, you wanted to go to meet your girlfriend. Okay, sir, I wanted to go to meet my girlfriend. Now, I went to Rapido. Rapido is there, an e-commerce operator online. I went to Rapido. Rapido directed me to one person. He is the bike wala person. He will come and drop me. Now, he will give me the service. So, he is the supplier. I am the recipient. Remember one thing over here. I went to Rapido. Rapido gave the service to him. He came and dropped me. Supplier will not pay. Do you think this bike taxi wala drivers will pay? No. Do you think you will pay GST under RCM by taking registration? No. Government saw that let's make Rapido only liable. You are the e-commerce operator. You are operating the e-commerce platform for booking taxis and all. You pay the GST under, uh, not RCM, you pay that 
GST under section number 95. So you know what will happen? From you, when they are collecting the amount, they will collect GST also and they will pay the GST under section number 95. It is applicable in case this person might be a Ola Uber, he is operating a radio taxi. Radio taxi means which is connect Ola Uber, etc. Motor cab, maxi cab, okay, sir, or might be a motorcycle or sir, rickshaw. All this, whenever you book through Ola, Uber, Rapido, etc. Ola, Uber, Rapido will be liable to pay the GST under section number 95. That is section number 95 that government is telling. Now, this is new introduction. You must know section number 95. Government is going ahead and telling whenever, whenever a service will be provided, which we are notifying only those services. Number one is transportation of passenger by Ola, Uber. Basically, radio, taxi, motor cab, maxi cab, motorcycle or any other motor vehicle. Omnibus, I will talk about omnibus now. Now, after one, they have introduced one A. One A, which is transportation of passenger by omnibus. Except where the person supplying the services through e-commerce is a company. Sir, can you please explain this? I'll tell you. Omnibus means bus. You know redbus.com? You supposingly wanted to go to some one other state or anywhere you wanted to go. You went to Red Bus and Red Bus get through. You booked a bus. And you went in the bus and the bus wala will give you the service. He is the supplier of the service who is operating a bus. You can go say it. Correct. And you are the recipient of the service. Redbus.com is the e-commerce operator. Correct sir. This is the point clear. Now, what they are telling, if it is a bus ka case, remember one thing, if the supplier is supposingly VRL Transport Private Limited, if it's a company, if it's a company, private limited, public limited, if it's a company, the supplier only, the supplier only will be paying the GST under forward charge mechanism, e-commerce will not pay the GST. But sir, supposingly in the same example, if I go, so it means who will collect the GST from you? In the above example, the supplier only will collect the GST from you and the supplier will pay the GST under forward charge. So, supplier will go ahead and collect the GST from you and supplier only will pay the GST under forward charge. So, basically when you are making the payment to them, they will give the payment to the supplier. Supplier will only pay the GST under forward charge. But sir, supposingly the case is, this is Gubbal Troubles, a, not a company not a company this is not a company then in that scenario remember one thing government told oh not a company this is a partnership firm or might be an individual who is just operating a bus through red bus then in that scenario red bus will collect the money plus the gst from you and red bus will pay the gst under section number 95 remember this point i hope this point is clear to all of you let me summarize this for you i will go ahead and tell you like this number one if there is a e-commerce operator you went to the e-commerce operator, e-commerce operator directed it. Might be here it is Uber, Ola, who is basically giving you radio taxi ke through transportation service, maxi cab, motor cab ke through, hai, or it is might be a bike, motor bike ke through services, motorcycle ke through service, rickshaw, rickshaw ke through services. Then remember one thing, in that scenario to always the e-commerce operator only will collect the GST and e-commerce operator will pay the GST under section number 95 to the government. But in this scenario, if it is a bus, only bus, bus ka case me, you have to remember, if the bus ka supplier is a company, Ram Limited, Ram private tours and travel limited ram private ram tours and travel limited pri, uh, travel private limited company then company will on here money will come money will come over here and this company only has to pay the gst basically when they are collecting the money they will collect the ticket ka price they will collect the gst they will pay the amount to him he has to pay the gst under forward charge mechanism to the government it means supplier only will pay but sir if it is not a company gobble travels not a company then sir then remember the e-commerce operator redbus.com has to pay the gst under section number nine five this is the point told over here the transportation of passenger by omnibus except where means transportation of passenger by omnibus also e-commerce operator will pay but where the person supplying through 
e-commerce is a company then they will company will pay the gst e-commerce operator will not pay done sir this point is clear next one is accommodation services sir what is accommodation services let's go ahead and understand accommodation services nowadays you know oyo oyo ka case mein yes sir oyo ka case mein remember one thing oyo then oyorooms.com now oyo is there other people are airbnb is there theek okay. supposingly this you went to one city you wanted to stay in a room you went to oyo oyo directed it to you to a hotel you went and stayed in the hotel now they, this hotel wala person this the hotel is the supplier you are the recipient remember one thing hotel wala person is the supplier you are the recipient they have gone ahead and told accommodation services oyo go ibbo etc in hotel in for residential or lodging purpose but here there is a note okay remember if this supplier who is there in this case first of all they have told that oyo will go ahead and pay e commerce will be liable but e commerce will be liable provided the supplier ka turnover is less than registration limit it means sir can you tell me one thing if you went to oyo oyo room oyo.com oyo directed it to a hotel you went and stayed he is the supplier you are the recipient you know who will pay the gst supplier if he is liable to register under section number 221 means his turnover has already crossed 20 lakh or 10 lakh then supplier will be liable to pay the gst it means the supplier will collect the gst from you and he will only pay but if supplier is small he is not turnover is not crossed 20 lakh 10 lakh if supplier is not liable to register under section number 221 it means he is a small supplier in that scenario remember government have told a hey, e-commerce operator you will be liable to pay the gst under 95 I hope this point is clear to all of you. I hope this point is clear to all of you. Please remember that the first one which I went ahead and told you was transportation services. I have gone ahead and drawn this also over here, sir. There is a e-commerce operator. I am the supplier. Omnibus wala drawing is not there. Omnibus is an amendment, so omnibus remember always. Okay, one minute. First, you remember this. Ola Uber ka case me what will happen, sir? always supplier will be liable always e-commerce operator will be liable if supplier is liable to register supplier is big small doesn't matter doesn't matter always e-commerce operator liable to pay gst under section number 95 i hope this point is clear to all of you theek hai but here please don't take omnibus to sir ola ke through one supplier is there he is already registered in gst still e commerce will be liable uber ke through one person is supplying service this person is already registered still still e commerce will be liable always e commerce will be liable theek hai sir sir secondly after this i will go ahead and give you one drawing which is like this supposing there is red bus this you can draw and keep this is one supplier this is one recipient he went to red bus he went red bus went ahead and directed it to a bus operator theek okay? hai this bus operator who is bus company bus operator or whoever is uh, running a bus company theek okay? hai now if this bus operator basically omnibus wala is a company is a company then the supplier will be liable basically if this bus operator basically who is the supplier is a company then supplier is liable but if he is not a company others might be a partnership firm might be an uh, individual then remember e-commerce operator will be liable I hope the first one is clear to all of you. 
first one is clear to all of you now we'll move to the second one second one was accommodation services government have notified the second service as accommodation service accommodation service means you and your girlfriend went to oh your room baba after marriage you wanted to travel so you went and traveled to a city now city may you wanted a hotel you booked a hotel theek hai now hotel wala went ahead and provided you the service hotel wala is the supplier here you have to remember here there are two cases remember if the supplier is liable to register under section number 221 means his turnover is more than registration limit then supplier will pay the gst supplier liable to pay gst e-commerce will not pay but if supplier is not liable to register means his turnover is less than registration limit or his turnover is not cross registered he is a small supplier he is not liable to register baba services ka case mein the turnover limit is 20 or 10 so if your turnover is not crossed if you are li not liable to register under section number 221 means your turnover is small then in that scenario e-commerce will be liable e-commerce operator will be liable to pay the gst i hope this point is clear to all of you chalo we'll move to the third service now after this comes housekeeping services sir can you please tell us about housekeeping service chalo i'll explain you about housekeeping service I have drawn here housekeeping service. Ah ha ha! One small boy, supposingly he is Vikram. Vikram was taking a shower. Suddenly the shower stopped. All the soap on his body. Now he wants to go ahead and take a shower. So he called a plumber, so that the plumber can come and repair the tap which is not working. So he went to Urban Clap. Urban Clap now Urban Company. They directed it to whom? A plumber. Plumber came and did what? Repairing. This is housekeeping. Housekeeping means. painting plumbing might be cleaning of the house all these are housekeeping services okay basically i'll go ahead and tell whatever uh, services like dry uh, deep cleaning services uh, then you can go ahead and say plumbing ka services electrician ka service remember one thing this is the supplier who is supplying through the e-commerce now in this scenario government went ahead and told again if the supplier is a big supplier who is liable to register under section number 95 under section number 221 sorry means his turnover is more than registration limit then supplier only will pay the gst under forward charge supplier will be liable to pay gst under forward charge but the, the supply is small he is not liable to register only under section number 221 means he is a small supplier then who will pay the gst then government went ahead and told if he is a small supplier like all these plumbers electrician etc which come to your place might be you booked it through e-commerce operator then government is telling who will pay the gst then government wanted gst and government told urban clap you take the gst registration under section number 95 and you pay the gst and hence government went ahead and told over here urban clap should pay the gst under section number 95 I hope the third service, which is housekeeping service, is also clear to all of you. Please write down till here the housekeeping wala service. I hope it is clear to all of you. Now, the next one over here, the next service which the government went ahead and told was restaurant services, like Swiggy, Zomato, etc. Get through when you are booking food, who will pay the GST? Now, small small people are also there who are. uh supplying through swiggy zomato etc small restaurants correct to what government went ahead and told over here swiggy zomato this is one girl she told mama mama i am hungry she went mama went to swiggy zomato swiggy or zomato they directed to a restaurant restaurant wala went ahead and supplied the food now who will pay the gst government told whether the whether the supplier of restaurant service is registered or unregistered doesn't matter no problem always e commerce operator will be liable to pay gst under section number 95 means who will pay e commerce operator will pay 
So when they are giving you, they sell you the food, when the payment is being collected, e-commerce will collect the GST also and e-commerce will pay the GST to the government. I hope these four services are clear to all of you. Yes, sir. Please write down this. Always remember, you went to Swiggy Zomato, Swiggy Zomato directed it to a restaurant, restaurant wala came and gave you the food, who will pay the GST? Always remember, always, whether the supply is registered, unregistered, doesn't matter. Always e-commerce operator will pay the GST. Who will pay? E-commerce operator will pay. Swiggy Zomato will pay. They will not pay the GST. Done, sir. Here one more small point which they entered and inserted in the fourth one. Except services by restaurant in specified premises. And what's a specified premise? Specified premise means premises providing hotel accommodation service having declared tariff more than 7500 per unit per day. Sir, what do you mean by this? Let me go ahead and quickly first explain you. So tell me one thing. There is Zomato over here. You went to Zomato. Zomato directed it to a restaurant. Restaurant supplied you the food. You will make the payment to Zomato. Who will collect the GST and who will pay the GST under 9.5? Zomato will pay the GST under section number 9.5. Theke, sir. Restaurant is registered or unregistered under GST. Doesn't matter. No problem. Always Zomato, Swiggy only will pay the GST under 9.5. Any e-commerce operator, whoever is the e-commerce, foodpanda.com, whoever, e-commerce operator only will pay. Always. Now they have gone ahead and told if the restaurant is in specified premises, then restaurant will pay. Sir, what do you mean by this? And they have told specified premises means that premises, that premises of which the declared tariff of a room is more than 7,500 per day. See, I'll show you over here. 7,500. Sir, what do you mean by this? Listen. For an example, you wanted to eat food, but you told ma ma ma, ma I want from Taj only. You went to Zomato. This is Taj Hotels. Hotel group Taj. Taj may Taj Hotels. You know the room rent is more than 7500. Might be the room rent over here is 8000 rupees per night. Here in this Taj group of hotels. One restaurant is there. Wah Taj. And you wanted it to eat from Wah Taj only. Okay. Now, this is a big hotel, Taj, of which the room rent is more than 7,500. This will be known as specified premise. Specified premises means the premises where the room rent is more than 7,500 per night. Okay. Now, you went to Zomato. Zomato directed it to Wa Taj. Wa Taj went ahead and supplied you the food. Remember, services by restaurant in specified premise. Specified premise means premises having hotel accommodation of declared tariff more than 7500 per unit per day means per room ka rent is more than 7500 that's an exception in that scenario remember because it's a big hotel government have gone ahead and told you are a restaurant which is located in a big hotel you only have to pay because how is it considered a big hotel by seeing the declared tariff if the declared tariff per room is more than 7500 then baba this people the supplier will supply you the food. They will only go ahead and collect the GST. Basically, what will happen? Zomato, ko, you will pay the total amount. Zomato will pay the amount to them. These people will pay the GST under forward charge mechanism. Here, in this scenario, e-commerce operator will not be liable to pay GST under 95. I hope all these points are clear to all of you. Please write down this also. Pause the video and write down. I'll tell you once again. All the four points which I have explained you. <sighs> Government have now gone ahead and notified section number 95. Basically, ICI has gone ahead and told for CA intermediate, 95 has to be studied. 95 says supplier, recipient, and th third is the e commerce operator. Government understood that it's easy to collect from the e commerce operator because they are more organized. Supplier is also unorganized, recipient is also not organized, so we'll collect it from the e-commerce operator and the first service which they notified is transportation of passenger if transportation of passengers is happening by all this vehicle 
तो सर द फर्स्ट वन यू ऑलरेडी टोल्ड अस व्हाट इज द फर्स्ट सर्विस आई टोल्ड यू इफ द इज ए ई कॉमर्स ऑपरेटर अदर देन ओमनी बस इफ द सप्लायर इज सप्लाइंग माइट बी ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ पैसेंजर बाय रेडियो टैक्सी टैक्सी मोटर कैब मैक्सी कैब मीटर्ड कैब ऑन विच द मीटर इज देयर ठीक है देन रैपिड दिस बाइक टैक्सी और रिक्शा ई रिक्शा देन रिमेंबर नेवर ई कॉमर्स विल पे नेवर सप्लायर विल पे ऑलवेज द ई कॉमर्स ओनली विल कलेक्ट द जी एस टी फ्रॉम यू एंड ई कॉमर्स विल पे ठीक है दिस पॉइंट इज क्यू सर वॉट इफ इट्स ए बस इफ बस इज देयर ई कॉमर्स इज देयर इफ बस ऑपरेटर इज ए कंपनी ही विल पे जी एस टी बट इफ इज नॉट ए कंपनी देन ई कॉमर्स विल पे रिमेंबर सेकेंड थिंग आई टोल्ड यू फर्स्ट वन क्लियर सेकेंड वन क्लियर देन मूव टू द नेक्स्ट वन हाउस कीपिंग एंड अकोमोडेशन अकोमोडेशन सर्विस आई टोल्ड यू रिमेंबर हियर दे इज समथिंग डिफरेंट हियर तो ऑलवेज ई कॉमर्स इज लाइबल वेदर सप्लाई इज रजिस्टर्ड एंड रजिस्टर्ड डजेंट मैटर बट हियर दे टोल्ड ओला ओयो रूम्स एयर बी एन बी इफ पीपल बुक थ्रू दैम रिमेंबर इफ दिस सप्लाई इज ए रजिस्टर्ड पर्सन who is liable to register basically under section number 221 his turnover has crossed 20 lakh or 10 lakh then he will only pay the gst under forward charge he will only collect the gst from the recipient he will only pay. but if supply is not liable to register then e commerce will collect the gst and e commerce will pay i hope this point is clear government wanted gst however if supply is registered he will pay supply is small person then e commerce will pay theek third service is house housekeeping services housekeeping means denting painting of the house cleaning electrician plumber all this ka service remember if the supplier who is supplying through e-commerce if the supplier is a person who is liable to register then supplier will pay the gst if supplier is not liable to register under 221 means he is a small supplier then he will not pay to whom whom to make bakra government made e-commerce as the bakra and tell told e-commerce 95 section says you should be paying the dst under section number 95 theek sir one more service notified restaurant service restaurant service ka case mein what government told if supposingly one person to on, went online bought food from a restaurant always restaurant registered and registered always e-commerce only will collect the gst and e-commerce will pay the gst but 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 here government told one point supposingly there is a specified premise specified premise means taj hotel oberoi hotel where the room rents are more than 7500 remember in that scenario for an example in that taj hotel one restaurant is there that restaurant because taj hotel ka room rent is more than 7500 that restaurant ke through when food is being supplied restaurant only will pay the gst basically total money will come to zomato zomato will give it to him he will only have to pay the gst under forward charge e-commerce operator will not pay but this is only for specified restaurant specified premises ka case mein means a restaurant which is located in a big hotel where the room rents are more than 7500 room rent is more than 7500 i hope this point is clear to all of you these are the four services which are being notified one one a Two, three, and four. I hope everyone is cleared. Number one, transportation of passenger by radio, taxi, motor cab, maxi cab, motorcycle, motor vehicle, accommodation, uh, omnibus. Well, I told you accommodation. I told you housekeeping. I told you and restaurant also. I told you one point with which is over here, which I want to ask you. You tell me. Okay, sir. Tell me. For an example, you wanted to fly. fly you went to clear trip clear trip is a clear trip is a e-commerce operator online you can go and book your ticket from clear trip clear trip directed it to a flight company akasha airline akasha airline gave you the service can you tell me who will be liable you went to e-commerce clear trip clear trip book the ticket with akasha airline he is the supplier you are the recipient who will be liable you will go ahead and tell me sir sir here you told the first one always e-commerce will be liable e-commerce will pay aren't nalayak remember i told you e-commerce will be always liable only in a scenario of what 
ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ पैसेंजर्स बाय रेडियो टैक्सी मोटर कैब मैक्सी कैब मोटरसाइकिल और एनी अदर व्हीकल विच इज बेसिकली रन ऑन रोड ओमनी बस बट आई नेवर वेंटेड एंड टोल्ड यू अबाउट एयरलाइंस एंड ऑल रिमेंबर हियर दे हैव क्लियरली टोल्ड इट्स रेडियो टैक्सी मोटर कैब मैक्सी कैब मोटरसाइकिल और एनी अदर मोटर व्हीकल इट इज नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट ए एयरलाइन इन दैट सीनारियो रिमेंबर इन दिस सीनारियो इट इज नेवर ए नोटिफाइड सर्विस हु विल पे सप्लायर ओनली विल पे अंडर फॉरवर्ड चार्ज मेकेजम ई कॉमर्स विल नेवर बी लाइबल यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दिस पॉइंट डन सर पॉइंट इज क्लियर लेट्स गो अहेड चलो I hope this point is clear to all of you. Here they have told one small proviso, one uh, exception they have gone ahead and told. I'll talk about a circular also on restaurant service little later. E-commerce has physical presence in taxable territory. TT means taxable territory. Taxable territory means India. Supposingly, we are telling Airbnb. Airbnb is in USA, and they are going ahead and in India they are providing their service. You can go to Airbnb and book a hotel in India. I wanted to go and stay in hotel, in a hotel. Supposingly, this is Airbnb over here. Then I can go to Airbnb, and Airbnb will direct, and I can go and stay in that hotel. In this scenario, Airbnb is in US. The e-commerce operator has it has is there in US. Now what to do? If e-commerce operator is in US, government told how will we catch the neck of a person who is sitting in US? E, Baba, online website too can be opened anywhere. Airbnb is listing Indian hotels, providing service to Indian people. So government went ahead and told e-commerce operator, if you are there in India, you take registration and you pay GST. If you are not there in India, e-commerce told, how will you catch me? So if e-commerce is there in India, e-commerce will take registration and pay GST. No sir, e-commerce is not there in India. E-commerce should appoint a representative in India whose neck government can catch. Representative in the taxable territory will be liable. Sir, e-commerce, Airbnb is telling, I to don't have a person also in India. Government told you don't have a person. You want to do business in India? No. Appoint a person in India, taxable territory, for the purpose of paying tax, and he will be liable. I hope this point is clear to all of you. Done, sir. This point is clear. Chalo. Now here there is a small circular which is there on restaurant service. Circular on restaurant service. Please come to the next page. This circular also, I have gone ahead and written down here. Also, the detailed circular is there in your book over here. Here, I have explained you section number nine five wala services. Section number nine five wala service along with this number one transportation of passenger, transportation of passenger if it is happening by omnibus, accommodation service, housekeeping service, and restaurant service. I will always recommend. Once you have heard this, again you have to hear this because you are a small kid now. Once you hear, you will not remember. So again, section number nine five, you should hear and then continue so that you understand it properly again and again. Baba, this video, anyways, you can see again and again. So two, three times you see it properly and go so that you can understand this. Done, sir. Point is clear. One shot you will not understand. Second time you must see it. Okay. Now I hope you have gone ahead and seen your TDS and TCS wala chart because if you have not seen your TDS and TCS wala chart which I have already provided in TDS and TCS wala chapter then you will not understand what I am going to talk now. Okay, so you should see that. GST on services supplied by restaurant through e-commerce operator. I will tell you this again. Supposing there is Zomato. Zomato has listed one supplier restaurant. He is a restaurant. And here, there is a recipient. Might be you are hungry. You went to Zomato. Zomato directed it to a restaurant. Restaurant supplied you the food. Unless it's a big restaurant located in specified premise like Taj, etc. Always e-commerce will pay the GST under section number 95. I hope you guys remember this. Section number 95, may they told e-commerce only will pay the GST. E-commerce will be liable. Correct. Now, this ke upar, some questions people had asked. So, they went ahead and clarified. Let's understand the circular which they have gone ahead and given. This circular I have gone ahead and simplified and written in your chart book also. I will explain it to you from the chart book. Textbook may anyways detailed mate is given. Here. Since e-commerce is liable to pay GST, it is not required to collect TCS 
बट ऑन अदर गुड्स एंड सर्विस नॉट नोटिफाइड ई कॉमर्स विल कलेक्ट टीसीएस इन द टीसीएस का चैप्टर प्लीज सी द टीसीएस का चैप्टर बिफोर यू सी दिस ठीक है ना वट हैपन्स टीसीएस का केस में वेन एवर एनी पर्सन सपोज दिस ए सप्लायर दिस ए ई कॉमर्स ऑपरेटर you went to e-commerce e-commerce directed to supplier supplier went ahead and gave the goods or service you went ahead and made the payment in tcs chapter we have learned that whenever e-commerce operator will pay you they will deduct tcs and they will pay the tcs to the government yes sir we know now in this scenario they are going ahead and asking one question that sir in case of restaurant money will go over here this e-commerce operator will only pay the gst under 95 when they are only paying the gst when they are only paying the gst when he is releasing the payment in case of restaurant service when he is releasing the payment to the supplier will tcs be applicable so government told tcs provision will not be applicable that's all is the first circular it is not required to collect but any other goods and service any other goods and service ka case mein to TCS will be collected, but in case of restaurant, when e-commerce is liable to pay, TCS will not be collected. So, sir, can you tell once again? I'll tell you once again over here. So, for an example, this wala case, first case, Zomato ka case me under section number nine five, GST is paid by Zomato. So, sir, when Zomato is releasing the payment to the restaurant, Zomato will not cut TCS. But, sir, what if this case is there? where e-commerce is not going ahead e-commerce is not going ahead and uh, paying the gst because here supply is liable then baba in this scenario when he is releasing the payment he will collect tcs i hope this point is clear to all of you done sir point is clear let's go ahead next e-commerce is not required to take separate registration to pay tax on restaurant service under 95 for an example if zomato supposingly is already e-commerce operator zomato swiggy etc is already a registered person already a registered person because might be their commission which they are taking from restaurants is already more than 20 lakh rupees so they are already a registered person now because restaurant services are supplied through them do they have to take one more registration just to pay tax under 95 government told not required if e-commerce is already a registered person just to pay the tax under 95 one more registration is not required what registration they already have that only can be used so what they are telling for an example this is zomato over here this is one person he went to zomato zomato directed it to a e-commerce operator not e-commerce sorry a restaurant restaurant went ahead and gave the food normal you understand okay he went ahead and made the payment zomato has to pay the amount under section number 95 gst has to be paid by zomato okay now they are asking might be zomato is already a registered person because it is charging commissions to restaurant and its it, its main income is commission its commission income already crossed 20 lakh so it's already a registered person whenever commission ke liye it is giving bill to the restaurant i give commission give commission it's already charging gst now just to pay tax under section number 95 do they again have to take registration do they again have to take registration so government clarified over here that no one more registration is not required what registration you have under that registration only you can go ahead and pay the tax under 95 also so they don't have to take one more registration just to pay the tax under section number 95 done sir this circular actually i don't consider very important for c intermediate but they have given it to you in your book so you must read and go in my opinion if you have understood this four services which i have explained you that only will be asked in the exam but this circular has been given so we are just trying to understand it little theek okay. hai now one more question which they asked for an example this is zomato you went to zomato for buying food Zomato directed it to a restaurant. Restaurant supplied you the food. Now the question which was asked was, sir, this restaurant is not in specified premise, big premises. No, this restaurant is registered or unregistered. Doesn't matter unless it is in specified premise. 
if it is a registered restaurant unregistered restaurant always e-commerce operator only will be liable always e-commerce will be liable that's all they have told even if e-commerce will be liable to pay gst on supplies made by unregistered restaurant through it basically through the e-commerce operator even if unregistered restaurants are supplying e-commerce operator only will pay Thick. next question for an example i am a restaurant i sell food also directly when people place order on e-commerce operator like zomato etc order comes that food also i supply so i supply through e-commerce also i supply directly when somebody some customer come and say sir sir give me two samosas i sell them also what will come in my aggregate turnover what orders come from zomato e will that also be my turnover plus what i am supplying directly to my customer will that also be my turnover government told sir you are selling through zomato or you are selling directly it's your sale only your aggregate turnover may what you are selling through the e-commerce operator or what you are selling directly to the customer might be your sale pay e-commerce operator paid the gst just because e-commerce operator paid the gst it is not his turnover it is still your turnover only so if i ask you i am a restaurant i sold directly to my customers when order comes through zomato swiggy etc that order comes to you that also i sell what is my turnover here say 10 lakh here 5 lakh what is my aggregate turnover remember your aggregate turnover is 15 lakh rupees i hope this point is clear to all of you that is what they are telling aggregate turnover of restaurant shall include value of supplies made through e-commerce operator whatever the supplies are made through e-commerce operator that will also be included in my aggregate turnover done chalo one more question people went ahead and asked one more question that sir supposingly this is zomato okay this is one person this is the restaurant person placed the order zomato ke through order came i went ahead and supplied the food he went ahead and paid to zomato might be 100 rupees plus whatever 5 rupees gst now zomato has to pay this gst 5 rupees to the government zomato already had some input tax credit lying with them might be zomato had gone ahead and bought some services or bought some goods and they already have some input tax credit now when zomato has to pay this gst which they have collected from the customer can they use their input tax credit government told no this gst which has to be paid by zomato always has to be paid through e cash ledger that is what is told e-commerce will pay gst in cash on the restaurant service they will never use their input tax credit they can't use their input tax credit always the tax has to be paid by using their e-cash ledger done sir this point is clear now one more question was asked for an example i am one shopkeeper i run restaurant also and i run i sell gifts also this is one boy he is in love, 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 red, red, love, love, wala smiley will draw. Okay. He went to Zomato. He told, I want one, uh, supposingly for my girlfriend, I want a pizza and one small gift also. Zomato took the order. For an example, generally Zomato may only food is there, but might be. There is an e-commerce operator who is allowing people that you can place order for food also and gift also. I went ahead and made the payment for the food also. Plus I made payment for the gift also. Order came over here in the restaurant. It is one shopkeeper. He went ahead and supplied the pizza also. And the gift also he supplied from his shop. What question was asked is what if this type of transaction happens. Are, what if this trans type of transaction happens wherein food is also supplied and okay huh. what if this kind of transaction happens wherein order was placed for food also order was placed for gift also and the shopkeeper supplied food also and gift also 
Now in this people asked whether on the restaurant plus give both pay e-commerce will pay or only on the food which was supplied through the restaurant basically restaurant service pay e-commerce will pay. So they clarified simple that whenever this kind of service is there remember on the food restaurant service the e-commerce this is restaurant service on this restaurant services e-commerce will go ahead and pay the GST means from them the e-commerce will collect the GST and pay on the gift which was supplied this supplier who is there he should only collect the GST and he should pay the GST under forward charge so on the food which is supplied who will pay e-commerce will pay on the gift who will who will pay the shopkeeper will pay they have gone ahead and clarified this because only on restaurant service e-commerce pays on the gift or any other goods and services e-commerce will not pay the supplier only will collect the GST and he should only pay the GST under forward charge mechanism to the court. That's all they have gone ahead and told over here if restaurant and other services are supplied to customer under the same order advisable e-commerce will raise separate separate bill to the customer for the restaurant services other goods and supply supply for the restaurant e-commerce will raise the bill e-commerce will collect the GST and pay for the other gifts which are supplied I am the supplier I should only raise the bill I should only collect the GST and I should pay it to the government. E supplier will raise the bill e-commerce will collect TCS because if it is not restaurant service e-commerce has to collect TCS. I hope this point is clear I will tell you once again for an example there is an e-commerce operator over here this is one person he is in love he went and placed an order order came to a supplier now here he supplied restaurant service also so what will happen for the restaurant service e-commerce will collect the GST and e-commerce will pay the GST under 95 now what happened he also supplied gift from here Baba for the gift might be the order went from here when e-commerce is giving the payment to him e-commerce will collect TCS because when section number 95 wala service is not there e-commerce collects TCS I hope you have seen the TCS wala chapter so on the gift this supplier only will raise the invoice he will only collect the GST he will collect the GST and he will pay the GST to the government but on the restaurant service e-commerce operator will pay the GST under 9.5. I hope this point is clear although this circular is not very important from exam point of view but still I have gone ahead and explained it to you in detail this time section number 95 is important I will recommend that students see this video again so that you can remember it properly for your exam don't miss it see this video what I have shown you what I have taught you now see it again and again so that you can understand this again and again properly one time might be you are little confused but again if you see you will be 100% clear. Done sir, that's all. So what are the various changes which are, okay. See this circular which was there. This circular ka each and every question. I have gone ahead and explained you over there only. Theek hai sir. Next. Now section number 9 was there. In section number 9. Just like section number 9, 1, 9, 2, 93, 94, and 95, which is under the CGST Act. Section number 91, 92, 93, 94, and 95 is under the CGST Act, which says whenever you supply G whenever you supply goods and service, you will collect the GST and pay to the government. Like how we have section number 91, we have section number 51 under the IGST Act. Under the IGST Act, which says IGST will be levied. Whenever there is an interstate supply, not intra, IGST is levied when interstate supply. So when you read the IGST Act, IGST Act may also we have section number 51, 52, 53, 54 and 55. 51 says that whenever IGST will be levied, IGST will be levied on interstate supply, same everything. But IGST ka maximum rate will be 40%. Why 40% sir? CGST is 20%, SGST is 20%, IGST will always be 40%. That is why it is told when you read this under the IGST Act, I have written down the IGST ka section also such for you to read. IGST Act mein section number 5 is there, which says whenever same like CGST Act mein we have 91929394955 for charging IGST, we have the IGST ka section IGST. 51, 52, 53, 54 and 55 which was not applicable for your C intermediate now they have included this but there is nothing to remember in this 
everywhere where you had intra in the CGST Act, in IGST Act, when you read 5.1, it intra will become inter. Section number 92 told CGST will be avid on HP man. Whenever high speed diesel, petroleum crude, motor spirit, aviation turbine fuel, and natural gas is supplied within the state, CGST will be levied. Outside the state, interstate, then, then IGST will be levied. Who told? 5.2 told. IGST on interstate supply of HP man will be levied from a date to be notified by government. That is told by 5.2. Like 9.3 may we have reverse charge services. 5.3 also, whenever all these services are supplied interstate, all these services are supplied interstate, who will say IGST uh, has to be paid under reverse charge? That is told by 5.3. But in 5.3, one more service has been notified. You remember, I will tell you this service. Importation of service, supplier is outside India, supplier is in US, I am in India, recipient is in India, supplier is in US, I am in India, Import, supplier supplied the service from outside India, importation of service, I had told you importation of service, business purpose, non-business purpose also, both will be considered as supply, section number 7-1-B, I told you, remember, but here they have gone ahead and told, do you think the supplier in US, it's a supply, GST has to be paid, do you think supplier in the US will pay? So in this scenario, who will pay the GST? Remember, the recipient in India has to pay, so the business entity has to pay the GST under RCM. Here also, RCM is there, both ka case mein RCM is there. Actually, here, uh, one more point is there, which is not applicable for C intermediate. Just imagine, USA 1% supplied architect ka services to me in India. Might be you took some consultancy service. You wanted in admission in the US. You took some consultancy service, non-business purpose. Do you think you guys will take registration and pay GST under RCM? And hence, this is exempted, but that exemption is not applicable in intermediate ex, uh, C intermediate. So, tell me one thing. Suppliers outside India, recipient is in India. I imported some service. Do you think the supplier outside India will take GST registration in India and pay GST under forward charge? So, for that also reverse charge is there. That, that is being told over here. Any services by any person in non-taxable territory, NTT means non-taxable territory, might be US, given to any person in taxable territory, India, who will pay the GST? Person in India will pay the GST under 5.4 and 5.5, same how we have understood 5.9.4 and 9.5. Just remember, instead of intra, whenever it is interstate supply and IGST has to be paid, 5.4 and 5.5 is applicable. Intra becomes inter, that's all. But this is not important for you guys at all. What is important for you guys this time to remember is section number 93 may they can ask you a question. Section number 93, I have already told you Indian Railways, whenever it is providing service, now no more reverse charge, business entities will not pay. Indian Railways always will charge GST and a forward charge. Secondly, very, very important from exam point of view, this 93 se questions will come or 95 se one question will come. 95 may, what is the most important thing to remember? This one, 1A, one 2, 3 and 4 wala services which I have explained you. Please see this video on uh, charge of GST again so that you don't forget it. I hope this point is clear. Yes sir, the point is clear. This circular, nine, this 5, 5, 5, 1 to 5, 5 I have told you. Not very important from exam point of view. This circular also I have gone ahead and explained it to you. And this also we have done. We are done with our chapter of charge of GST. Now, please come to the next chart. The next chart is on composition scheme. Please come to composition scheme, everyone. Please come to composition scheme. In composition scheme, they have gone ahead and introduced one small change. Before I go ahead and talk about this change, I want you guys to please come to the registration chapter. First, we'll understand the registration chapter. What are the various changes? And then we'll come back to composition scheme and I'll go ahead and talk about it. Please come to your registration chapter. Registration chapter may, we had three sections. Section number 22, section number 23, section number 24. Section number 22 used to go ahead and talk about 
those people who are liable for registration section number 22 1 2 3 4 i hope you remember section number 22 1 told if your turnover section number 22 1 i am talking if your turnover is more than if you are a supplier of service 20 lakh or 10 lakh if you are a supplier of goods 40 lakh 20 lakh or 10 lakh only then you are required registration but section number 24 went ahead and told that you will be required compulsory registration section number 24 when you used to learn i'll go back to the chart and i'll tell you one minute i'll rotate this chart just a minute ah done so section number 20 registration may section number 22 told that a person will be liable whenever he crosses 20 lakh 10 lakh but we went ahead and understood that sir registration limit will be uh for supplier of services it was always 20 lakh or 10 lakh i hope you guys remember for supplier of goods it was 40 20 and 10 i hope you guys remember till here yes sir but section number 23 was there who are not required registration section number 24 was there which used to talk about compulsory registration here we had gone ahead and already learned the first one that if you are making interstate supply you will be required compulsory registration casual taxable persons are required compulsory registration if you had to pay tax under section number 95 uh under rcm you are required compulsory registration here we have now point number 4 also which has been introduced that sir whenever the e-commerce operator has to pay tax under section number 95 just now we went ahead and learned about e-commerce operator here just a minute i'll rotate this so here we had gone ahead and learned that sir always ola uber will be liable e-commerce will be liable to pay tax under section number 95 i told you whether supply is registered or not registered e-commerce operator will be liable in the second one i told when the supplier will not be liable to register under 22 then e-commerce will have to go ahead and collect gst and pay tax under section number 95 here also i told you whenever his turnover is less than registration limit under section number 221 means he is not liable to register then in that scenario e-commerce operator will be liable to pay tax under section number 95 and the last one i went ahead and told you in case of restaurant etc also e-commerce operator will be liable whether restaurant is registered or unregistered e-commerce will be liable to pay tax under section number 95 now you tell me one thing if e-commerce is liable to pay tax under section number 95 it has to take registration who will tell them to take registration and that is what they have gone ahead and told in the chapter of registration now that sir if you are a e-commerce operator who has to go ahead and pay tax under section number 95 just now which i have gone ahead and told you we also call them aggregators why aggregators sir because they aggregate suppliers and recipients and they merge them together so suppliers and recipient aggregation ka work is done by them so i had already told you in case of housekeeping service accommodation service transportation of passenger services like through ola uber etc or restaurant service may whenever 95 may tax has to be paid by the e-commerce operator they have to take registration whenever e-commerce has to pay the tax they have to take registration under section registration under section number 24 compulsory registration has been told one minute i'll show you uh i taught you here see when i taught you here i told sir e-commerce will be liable to so when e-commerce is liable he has to take registration here sir i told when supply is not liable to register e-commerce will be liable to so e-commerce is liable to pay the tax he will collect and pay to so he has to take registration third one when urban club has to collect and pay means when the supplier is not liable to register then e-commerce has to pay so they have to take compulsory registration and the last one i went ahead and told you whether supply is registered or unregistered e-commerce operator will have other than big taj hotel and all they will pay so that time supplier will not be liable to register but supposingly swiggy zomato etc ke through whenever you book food they will collect the gst and pay so for collecting and paying they will have to take registration under section number 95 that's all is the small point which i have gone ahead and told you over here done sir so now in compulsory registration they have included this point saying whenever the supplier under section number 95 the e-commerce operator has to pay the tax that time e-commerce has to take compulsory registration nrtp i have anyways gone ahead and told you tds deductor i have told you the tds deductor ka chart has been taught sir government department of central government state government local authority sir in that case those people have to go ahead and deduct tds and pay to the government baba refer to the tds ka chapter there i have gone ahead and told the tds deductors have to take a separate registration and deduct the tds this point i have mentioned it over here also that if you are a tds deductor you will have to go ahead and deduct the tds and pay to the 
गवर्नमेंट फॉर दैट यू हैव टू टेक रजिस्ट्रेशन एजेंट वाला केस एनी वेज वॉज डिस्कस लास्ट टाइम ओनली दर इज नो चेंज ओवर हियर नाउ नाउ ना नेक्स्ट केस ओवर हियर इज पर्सन सप्लाइंग अदर देन नाइन फाइव वाला सप्लाइज बिकॉज नाइन फाइव वाला सप्लाइज आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू वट आर द नाइन फाइव वाला सप्लाइज सर हाउ डू वी रिमेंबर नाइन फाइव वाला सप्लाइज टी एच ए आर थार यू हैव टू रिमेंबर सर वट इज टी टी फॉर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ पैसेंजर थ्रू वर्ड सर ओला उबर रेडियो टैक्सी मैक्सी कैब मोटर कैब सर मोटरसाइकिल and also omnibus ke through when transportation is done but the omnibus need not be a public limited company private limited it should not be a company it should not be a company then e-commerce operator will be liable housekeeping services a for accommodation services just for you to remember and r for restaurant services other than this if you are going ahead and supplying any services these four services i have already told you specifically who will be liable when e-commerce will be liable and when supplier will be liable we have already learned this in detail i have told you in 95 now other than this service if supposingly there is a e-commerce operator over here for an example flipkart theek okay? hai what happens one person please see the tcs ka chapter before studying all this you should have seen that chapter on my youtube channel tds and tcs theek okay? hai now if flipkart is there One person went to Flipkart. Flipkart ke through order came to one supplier. This supplier will go ahead and supply the service. I hope you guys remember. This will be a supplier who is supplying the. So it might be there is a supplier of goods. You went to Flipkart. Flipkart went ahead and directed the order to supplier. Supplier will pack the goods and supply to the buyer. In this case, because Flipkart has to deduct TCS under section number. 95 flipkart has to take compulsory registration which is told over here a e-commerce who has to collect tcs under section number 52 has to go ahead and take compulsory registration he will deduct the tcs and he will give it to the government and government will give it back to you in your e cash ledger now how will you get the amount in your e cash ledger back if you are not a registered person and hence they went ahead and told a supplier of goods or if you are supplying services also which is other than 95 baba supplier of goods or services through e-commerce also this person has to take compulsory registration so sir two more points over here number 1 if you are a e-commerce operator other than 95 95 i have told you those four services may what is to be done other than that if you are a flipkart e-commerce operator anyone is supplying goods through you or services so what happens in supplying goods or service one person will go online place an order order will come over here you will go ahead and either provide the service or you will pack the goods and you will go ahead and supply the goods so in that case one this guy is also required registration over here compulsory registration e-commerce operator when they have to deduct tcs they have to take compulsory registration and also the person supplying other than 95 95 ke liye i have told you 95 wala case mein what is to be done we have already discussed above right through e-commerce who is required to deduct tcs if you are a person supplying goods or services then also you are required compulsory registration now let me go ahead and in detail talk about it supposingly i'll go ahead and talk about uh here one house joy is there or i'll go ahead and talk about one e-commerce operator who is providing beauty services beauty.com theek hai this guy was there he is getting married theek hai so he went to beauty.com beauty.com directed it to a person this person is providing not housekeeping service denting painting of person he is not providing housekeeping service so it is not under 95 he is a beautician or she is a beautician she will come do the denting painting of this person and he will become beautiful theek okay? hai listen carefully now in this case order went over here order came over here she went ahead and provided service now in this case these people went now these people are required compulsory registration but she went to the girl sir my turnover is very small please exempt me from compulsory registration these people are not listing me only in the e-commerce platform saying i am a uh, supplier of service and i have to take compulsory registration so government went 95 wala supplies 
फोर सर्विसेज विच आई टोल्ड यू ट्रांसपोर्टेशन हाउस कीपिंग अकोमोडेशन एंड रेस्टोरेंट प्लीज कीप दम सेपरेटली आई एव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू अबाउट दम अदर देन दैट एनी सर्विसेज सप्लाइड थ्रू ई कॉमर्स यू हैव टू टेक कंपल्सरी रजिस्ट्रेशन बट देन दिस पीपल स्टार्टेड क्राइंग सर प्लीज डोंट टेल एस टू टेक कंपल्सरी रजिस्ट्रेशन वी आर सप्लायर ऑफ सर्विस थ्रू ई कॉमर्स प्लीज डोंट टेल एस टू टेक कंपल्सरी रजिस्ट्रेशन एंड एंड गवर्नमेंट वेंट एड एंड इशूड वन नोटिफिकेशन अंडर सेक्शन नंबर ट्वेंटी टू एंड टोल्ड इफ यू आर ए सप्लायर ऑफ सर्विस थ्रू ई कॉमर्स देन अप टू ट्वेंटी लैक और टेन लैक इन केस ऑफ एम स्क्वेर एन टी मणिपुर मिजोरम नागालैंड एंड त्रिपुरा यू डोंट हैव टू टेक कंपल्सरी रजिस्ट्रेशन एंड यू नो वट एवरी वन ओवर हियर नाउ सो इफ ए पर्सन गोज ऑनलाइन ऑर्डर कम्स ओवर हियर नाउ यू विल हैव टू गो एड एंड सी सर्विस का केस आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग गुड्स का केस ऑल्सो आई एक्सप्लेन यू ओके तो वट गवर्नमेंट इज टेलिंग इफ यू आर ए पर्सन गोइंग हेड एंड सप्लाइंग सर्विसेस सो बेसिकली दिस पर्सन वेंट एंड प्लेस एन ऑर्डर आई वॉन्ट ब्यूटी सर्विसेस द ऑर्डर केम टू दिस मैडम दिस मैडम वेंट एड एंड प्रोवाइडेड द सर्विस सो सर इन दिस केस कंपल्सरी रजिस्ट्रेशन इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड फॉर दैम नाउ एग्जम्पन हैज बिन गिवेन वट इज द एग्जम्पन यू हैव टू सी दिस पर्सन का टर्न ओवर सप्लायर ऑफ सर्विस का टर्न ओवर इफ हीज टर्न ओवर is more than registration limit which is 20 lakh or 10 lakh or his her turnover is less than registration limit which is 20 lakh or 10 lakh if more than turnover 20 lakh compulsorily they have to now take registration but if it is less than registration limit they are exempted from compulsory registration it means they are not registered person they will not be a registered person if their turnover is less than registration limit correct now i will not talk about when your turnover is more when your turnover is more you have to take compulsory registration okay i'll take this to the next page now so now i'm talking only about supplier of service theek okay? hai so now if i go ahead and tell you her turnover is less than registration limit over here she is exempted from registration it means she will not be a registered person and she is supplying her services through e-commerce in the tcs chapter i told you e-commerce whenever the payment will come e-commerce when he is giving the payment he will deduct tcs and give it to the government and government will go ahead and give the credit to her but she is not a registered person so in this case number 1 you have to remember turnover is less than registration limit or equal to registration limit she is exempted from compulsory registration plus e-commerce operator will also not deduct tcs because she is not a registered person how will she get the credit and hence e-commerce will not go ahead and deduct any tcs also done sir this point is clear for supplier of service you told theek hai nine five wala services four services you leave it for those four services i have already told you in detail what is to be done transportation of passenger housekeeping accommodation and restaurant i have already explained you in detail for both the four services other than those four services any services which are supplied through e-commerce remember if the person ka turnover is more than registration limit he will be required compulsory registration if the turnover is less than registration limit then sir that person will be exempted from registration supplier of service now if that person is exempted from registration how will she get the credit so hence e-commerce has also been told go refer to your e-commerce ka chart i have told their supplier of service when e-commerce will not go ahead and deduct tcs if they are not a registered person who are exempted from registration chalo i'll tell you about goods now for an example this is flipkart now for goods also they have gone ahead supplier of goods and having turnover in last year or current financial year not exceeding registration limit exempted from compulsory registration but subject to the following condition so it means if i am a supplier of goods through flipkart for an example one person went and placed an order through flipkart flipkart went ahead and directed to me i am supposingly supplier of goods i will pack the goods and send to this person this person will go ahead and make the payment to the flipkart supposedly 50000 plus gst when flipkart is making the payment to me flipkart will deduct tcs give it to the government and government whatever tcs is there government will give it back to me but here also they have gone ahead and now told that if there is a supplier of goods whose return over is greater than registration limit then they are required compulsory registration but 40 lakh 20 lakh 10 lakh in some state registration limit but if their turnover is less than equal to registration limit then they are exempted from registration that is what is being told that sir supplier of goods 
having aggregate turnover in preceding financial year or current financial year not exceeding registration limit are also exempted from compulsory registration but there is some condition that that person should not make any interstate supply it means when i am supplying through flipkart and all me when i am going ahead and supplying to this guy it should be only intrastate supply when i will issue the invoice no i should only charge cgst and sgst i should only make intrastate supply i should not make any interstate supply this is the condition for supplier of goods next shall not make supply of goods through e-commerce in more than one state or duty i should not go ahead and supply through e-commerce in more than one state or duty i should supply only in one state then be i am required to obtain pan number i should take pan number not gst number pan number okay under the income tax pan number is there i should have pan number before making the supply through e-commerce i should go online and declare pan number address of the place of business state or union territory in which registration in which person seeking to make supply so what i should do before going ahead and making the supply i should go here gst.gov.in here i should go services user services can you see generate user id i should go over here here i should go ahead and declare that sir i want to enroll as a supplier through e-commerce that sir i want to supply through e-commerce i want enrollment i should proceed i should declare my pan number my email id phone number and the state in which i want to supply all these details i should go ahead and declare and i will get one enrollment number see what they are telling over here on validation means once you declare you will be given one enrollment number shall be granted and only one enrollment number shall be granted in a state or ut no supply to be made before such enrollment is granted means before you are granted any enrollment you should not make any supply so sir now tell me one thing if the supplies are coming under section number 95 then what will happen sir if the person if the supplies are coming under section number 95 those services are t transportation housekeeping accommodation and restaurant services transportation housekeeping and transportation of passenger by radio taxi maxi cab motor cab motorcycle etc housekeeping service not person beautician service nahi housekeeping plumber electrician uh, all, all the deep cleaning services house related services theek okay? hai accommodation service and restaurant service these four services i have already gone ahead and explained you leave these four services these four services may either supplier will be liable or the e-commerce will be liable whenever e-commerce will be liable e-commerce will take compulsory registration barring these four services now if any other goods and service if you are a person supplying through e-commerce means you are going ahead and supplying through an e-commerce operator you are required compulsory registration they told but then to, they told if you are a supplier of service or supplier of goods you have to see if there is a person who is supplying services through e-commerce then exemption has been granted up to 20 lakh or 10 lakh you can provide services through e-commerce you will not be required compulsory registration but if turnover is more than registration limit means it crosses 20 lakh or 10 lakh then you are required compulsory registration okay supplier of goods if your aggregate turnover is more than registration limit compulsory registration but if your aggregate turnover is less than equal to registration limit means 40 lakh 20 lakh or 10 year 10 lakh in current year or last year then you will be exempted but remember when you are exempted you have to fulfill some condition you should make only intrastate supply see over here exempted subject to the following condition you such person shall not make any interstate means you should supply only within the state shall not make supply of goods through e-commerce in more than one state or duty you should not supply in more than one state you shall be required to obtain pan and before making supply through e-commerce declare the pan number address of the place of business and the state or union territory which he the person makes once seeks to make supply all this you have to declare on the portal portal will now give you once the portal has checked everything it will give you enrollment number one enrollment number will be granted in a state or union territory and you should not make any supply before the enrollment number is granted to you that's all they have gone ahead and told you should not go ahead and make any supply before enrollment number is granted done 
and sir tell me one thing if my aggregate turnover is more than registration limit supplier of goods or service so for an example i am supplier of service or i am a supplier of goods and my aggregate turnover is more than registration limit then sir if I am supposingly supplying through Flipkart, one person went to Flipkart, Flipkart's order came to me, I am disposing the order, this person will make the payment, Flipkart will deduct TCS, Flipkart will deduct TCS, Flipkart will pay the TCS to the government and government will give me the credit, correct sir? Now remember one thing, in this scenario, first of all, you will also be required compulsory registration because your turnover is more than registration limit, compulsory registration. And Flipkart, because it has to deduct TCS, they have told a person who is required to deduct TCS also will be required compulsory registration. I hope this point is clear to all of you. Please come to the chart. So now you have to remember who are the people who are required to take compulsory registration. Number one, if you are an interstate supplier, interstate suppliers to take compulsory registration, handicraft goods, craftsman goods was already exempted. That is still there. Supplier of services exempted. This was already there. There is no point. Uh, there is no additional point. Casual taxable person required compulsory registration. Handicraft goods wala was exempted up to 20 lakh, 10 lakh. Person, if you have to pay tax under RCM, you are required compulsory registration. This point was also done. Here, the additional point came. Whenever e-commerce operator has to pay tax under section number 95, we have already learned 95. This is the additional point. Then e-commerce has to go ahead and take compulsory registration and pay tax under section number 95. This point we have understood. This is THAR service, THAR, THAR the car, transportation, housekeeping, accommodation, restaurant service. Whenever e-commerce is liable to pay tax, e-commerce has to take compulsory registration. NRTP we had already understood, TDS deductor. Please refer to the TDS, TDS wala chapter, TDS deductors. Those government departments also has to take compulsory registration. Agent wala point, if I am supplying on behalf of a taxable person, I am an agent. I also have to take compulsory registration. This point was already there. Addition done over here. That other than 95 wala supplies, 95 wala supplies ke liye we have already spoken. When e-commerce has to take registration, we have already gone ahead and spoken about 95. Other than that, any goods and services supplied through e-commerce, supplier of services exempted up to 20 lakh, 10 lakh, supplier of goods exempted up to registration limits which is li limit which is 40 20 or 10 other than that if any person is supplying through e-commerce first of all e-commerce will collect the payment when e-commerce is giving e-commerce has to deduct tcs so e-commerce also will take compulsory registration and this person because the tcs will be paid to government and government will give him give the credit in the e-cash ledger this person also is required compulsory registration done sir this point is clear Cholo. now come to the next one the next chart is relating to your registration may the second chart which was there where they used to go ahead and talk about rule number eight now this rule number eight if we go ahead and see over here rule number eight was not applicable okay uh compulsory registration wala additional point who are the who are the people who are required compulsory registration services wala exam goods wala people exempted tcs uh, collector section number 52 may e-commerce also has to take registration the summary has been written over here now uh, biometric based Aadhaar authentication. I hope you guys remember biometric based Aadhaar authentication was there. I'll tell you that if you are a person who has been selected, means you have submitted your application GST RG01, but now if you are being selected by the portal that you have to do biometric based Aadhaar authentication, then your application will be deemed to be submitted only when you go. Here, this point was there. If a person is identified by the portal, you submitted your GST RG01, but portal identified you as a risky person and portal told beta, you must go ahead and get your biometric based Aadhaar authentication means you should give your thumb impression. You should go to a place which is notified by the government. You should give your thumb impression, photos, etc. will be taken. Original documents will be verified. Correct and your registration will be application will be completed only when you have gone ahead and completed this process of getting biometric based Aadhaar authentication. This was earlier only made applicable to Gujarat. Now Puducherry ka people who are going ahead and submitting their application, they may also be identified by the portal and portal will tell them please get your biometric based Aadhaar authentication only then only then your registration will be deemed to be submitted. Now this point also made applicable to Puducherry. Done sir. After that, rule number 8 may one small point was there, which used to go ahead and say that, sir, NRTP ke liye GST REG01 is not applicable. Means application 
form when you are submitting gst rec01 was the application form for everyone this form was not applicable means rule number 8 was not applicable for nrtp tds deductor tcs collector and also if a person is supplying oidr services like netflix etc oidr means online information database access and retrieval service online there is some data some information which you want to access which you can access and use so basically i can go ahead and call netflix netflix from us goes ahead and provides a service for them also gst reg01 was not applicable now if a person they have gone ahead and told over here if a person is supplying online money gaming from outside india poker.com us ka person is supplying in India online money gaming for them also GST REG 01 shall not be applicable because for them GST REG 10 is applicable. So who are the people for whom REG 01 is not applicable? Remember number one if you are a NRTP non-resident taxable person, TDS deductor, TCS collector for them also GST REG 01 is not applicable. Other than that if you are supplying OIDAR in services, online information database access and retrieval services or online money gaming from outside India for you also GST REG01 is not applicable. So please remember the people for whom GST REG01 is not applicable. Here the change is online money gaming because now it's an actionable claim and if you are supplying online money gaming, if you are a supplier of online money gaming from outside India for you also GST REG01 is not applicable because for them REG 10 is applicable which you will learn in CA final. So in your exam they can ask you who are the people for whom GST REG 01 is not applicable. These four people please remember. Done sir. After that sir the next one over here is rule number 9. Rule number 9 may what change has come. In the chart book there is no change. You have to remember one thing. Whenever the officer will come for physical verification of your place of business. Remember earlier you had to be present. Whenever officer will come for physical verification, rule number 8, you submit your application. Rule number 9, my, now might be you have not done Aadhaar authentication or Aadhaar authentication failed or the portal identified you for physical verification or proper officer is telling your physical verification of your place of business has to be done. I'll show you over here. You failed to authenticate Aadhaar or you did not opt for Aadhaar or a person has undergone other authentication but is identified by the portal on the basis of risk parameters for carrying out physical verification or proper officer with the approval of the officer greater than equal to assistant commissioner deems it fit to carry out physical verification whenever physical verification used to happen no earlier you had to be present now i am going on a holiday i am telling i can't be present now what to do so they are going ahead and telling even if you are not present also it's okay rule number nine may they used to say person had to be present now if the person is not present also might be my employees will be there in my office they will still come and do the physical verification me present at my place of business that point has been done away with means i don't have to be present at the time of physical verification done sir this is the next point which they have gone ahead and made over here saying physical presence of the person is not required when the Physical presence of the person is not required at the place of business. When physical verification of the place of business is done, I don't have to be present. Presence of the applicant is no more required. Done. Rule number 10 used to go ahead and tell you. Rule number 10 I will show you in the chart. Rule number 10 used to go ahead and tell you. Once you get registration. Once your registration has been approved. Rule number 10 may. Registration certificate is issued. You have to go online and furnish your bank account detail. Within 45 days or first monthly return. Correct? 45 days or monthly return. Now they have gone ahead and told you have to furnish your bank account detail within 30 days from the registration grant. Once the registration is granted, not 45 days, 30 days or before furnishing GSTR1 or using invoice furnishing facility, whichever is earlier. So if you are a person under quarterly return monthly scheme, you will have to use invoice furnishing facility. If you are a person not under quarterly return monthly return then you will use gstr1 so remember within 30 days from grant of registration or before going ahead and using gstr1 or iff whichever is earlier so if i go ahead and tell you i have been granted registration on the 5th of january 5th of january say i have to see 30 days registration granted rc granted 30 days means sir january may 31 days 5 days gone 26 days in january plus 4 days 4 days means 4th of february or before furnishing your first GSTR1, January month ka you will furnish GSTR1 by 
11th of February. So before 11th of February or before 4th of February, whichever is earlier. So before 4th of February, you should go ahead and furnish your bank account detail. Chalo, if I give you an example, for an example, my registration was granted on 20th of January. 20th of January means January 31 days, 20 days gone. January may I have 11 days plus I need 19 more days. It will complete my 30 days. So by 19th of February, 30 days will get over. Here 30 days gets over. Or sir, January month ka you will furnish your GSTR 1. By what date sir? January ka you will furnish your GSTR 1 by 11th of February. 11th of February or your 19th of February, whichever is earlier. So 11th of February, tha, you should furnish your bank account detail. Sir, if I am a person under invoice furnishing facility, invoice furnishing facility may a person who is under quarterly return monthly payment, what QRMP scheme in our return chapter we had understood. So for an example, I am granted registration on 20th January by this is January month by 19th of February 30 days gets over invoice furnishing facility for the month of January. The due date is 13th of February. So before 13th of February or before 19th of February, whichever is earlier in these two by here, my bank account detail should be furnished. This is the point which they have gone ahead and told you should furnish your bank account detail by 30th of within 30 days from registration or your GSTR one, whichever is earlier or if you are under QRMP scheme, then they are telling 30 days or invoice furnishing facility, whichever is earlier. Both ka example I have gone ahead and told you over here. Done, sir. This point is clear. Then now here, if you go ahead and see, see here. So you should go ahead and after registration has been granted within 30 days from the grant of registration or before furnishing GSTR1 or using invoice furnishing facility. If you are a person under QRMP scheme, you will use invoice furnishing facility, whichever is earlier, you should furnish your bank account detail on the common portal. That's all has been told. Now, rule number 25 used to go ahead and talk about physical verification of place of business. It's not in your chart. I'm telling you physical verification of your place of business. Now, physical verification of your place of business. If registration has to be now physical verification can happen after granting registration means the officer can come and see your place of business might be before granting your registration also physical verification of your place of business can be done officer can come so now here one and two there are small changes understand this what are they going ahead and telling they are telling if supposingly your registration is granted and after that the officer wants to do physical verification where proper officer is satisfied that physical verification is required to be done after granting registration he may get such verification of place of business done and verification report which is gst reg 30 along with other document whatever your aadhar card pan card which he has taken when he came for physical verification including photograph shall be uploaded in reg 30 on the common portal within 15 working days from the date of such verification. For an example, you are already granted registration. I was already granted registration, but PO had some doubt. Proper officer had some doubt. So he told I will go for physical verification. He came for physical verification. He came and saw that are you actually doing business or not? He took photograph of your place of business. He took your documents, etc. He took your photograph. Now this physical verification, one report is there GST REG 30. Within how many days of physical verification of your place of business, he should upload this report. If registration was already granted and after that they have come for physical verification, this report should be uploaded within the next 15 working days. GST REG 30, officer should go ahead and upload this report on the common portal within 30, 15 working days. Done. Okay. Sir, what if? I am not yet granted registration, but officer wants to do physical verification of my place of business. Sir, before granting registration also, they can do physical verification of your place of business. Sir, when they can do? I will show you here. Before granting your registration, you have failed to do Aadhaar authentication. Your Aadhaar authentication failed. Or you did not opt for Aadhaar authentication. Or a person has undergone Aadhaar authentication, but you are identified by the portal because as a risky person on the basis of risk parameter and they are telling your physical verification has to be done of your place of business or proper officer deems it fit to carry out physical verification in this four scenario before granting registration before granting registration they have to go ahead before registration certificate is granted they have to do physical verification they can do physical verification but the report has to be uploaded 
so now if you go ahead and see over here within 30 days of the submission of application they have to grant you registration so when these 30 days are grant so here you submitted application now within 30 days they have to grant you registration they have to complete physical verification and five working days prior only this physical verification report has to be uploaded five working days prior five working days prior to the completion of the time limit and the time limit is 30 days so before that 30 days five working days prior only he has to upload the physical verification report so sir physical verification if it is done before grant of registration so before granting registration whatever is the time limit to complete the physical verification and give you applic registration five working days prior he should upload physical verification report in gst reg 30 sir if it is done after registration is granted if after he wants to do physical verification might be for any reason officer thinks that your place car physical verification has to be done because it was not done before now he wants to do then he has to do it and upload the report within 15 days once the physical verification is done after that the gst reg 30 should be uploaded within 15 working days is what they are trying to tell over here in rule number 10 in rule number 25 they have gone ahead and told this now earlier it was 15 working days uh, for both which they used to go ahead and talk now they have gone ahead and amended and they have told this physical verification if done after granting registration they will upload the verification report within 15 working days post verification if physical verification is done before granting registration why will they do did not opt for other other authentication failed portal has identified you as a risky person or officer has identified you that your physical verification is to be done then remember one thing prior to the completion of that time limit which is told under rule number nine which is basically 30 days five working days prior to the completion of the 30 days five working days prior only this gst reg 30 physical verification report should be uploaded on the portal by the officer that's all they have gone ahead and told over here done sir this point is clear i hope you guys remember suspension now please come to the next chart on suspension chart number 10 here rule number 21a is there which used to go ahead and say when your registration will be suspended one was there two was there two a was there here they have gone ahead and upload put one point number b also what is point number b telling point number b is telling if you don't upload your if you don't go ahead and provide your bank account detail baba bank account detail should be given within 30 days or gstr1 or invoice furnishing facility whichever is 30 days may or before making your GSTR-1 or IFF, whichever is earlier. You have to go ahead and furnish your bank account detail. Now, what if I did not furnish? They are telling, one to was already there that we can cancel your registration. But before cancelling your registration, which is told in section number 29, what they are telling is, we will go ahead, portal will automatically actually go ahead and suspend your registration. They are telling, there is a contravention of provision of 10A, then then also they will go ahead and suspend your registration now sir my registration is suspended do one thing before your registration gets cancelled run baba run go online and furnish your bank account detail registration suspension will be revoked that's what they have gone ahead and told over here now see a person suspension sir to a point may they have added over here whenever your bank account details are not furnished within the time limit basically as per 10a which i have just now taught it to you rule number 10a may they told you should furnish your bank account detail within 30 days or first gstr1 or making your invoice furnishing facility whichever is earlier if you don't furnish your bank account detail they will suspend your registration but the registration suspended for contravention of 10a and the registration has not been cancelled by the officer the suspension shall be deemed to be revoked upon compliance with 10a means run baba run furnish your bank account detail and registration cancelled will be registration suspended the suspension will be revoked and you can continue your business no tension but if registration is cancelled then then you have to go for revocation section number 30 but if registration is not cancelled only your registration has been suspended because bank account details are not furnished run baba run go online submit your bank account detail and registration suspension will be revoked done sir after that in revocation they have gone ahead and made a change i'll show it to you from the chart book directly here here suspension ke liye, earlier the time limit was you should apply for suspension within 30 days 
additional commissioner joint commissioner can extend by 30 days and further extendable by 30 days it was like this that 30 days may you should apply if you could not then 30 days extension will be given again 30 days ka extension can be given now they have deleted this and they have told 90 days may you should apply for revocation it means if your registration is cancelled under section number 29 and you are sir please don't cancel my registration go online and baba revocation ke liye apply not 30 days now within 90 days it was earlier 30 days now it is made 90 days and they are telling even within 90 days if you can't apply you will be given extension and that extension can be given by commissioner or any person authorized by the commissioner for a further period not exceeding 180 days means additionally you can be given 180 days to go ahead and file for revocation so sir revocation ka time limit of 30 days now made 90 days and additionally 180 days ka time limit can be granted Additionally, 180 days ka time limit can be granted by the commissioner or a person authorized by the commissioner. That's all is the change over here which has come in your registration ka chapter. Number one, section number 24, additional point now. What are the additional points which have come? Here, one, two, TDS deductor, three, persons applying through e-commerce or if you are e-commerce was to deduct, TCS, compulsory registration, four more point added. Okay, sir. Other than that, rule number 8, I went ahead and told you, rule number 8 is not applicable for persons applying online money gaming also from outside India. For them also, rule number 8 is not applicable. Rule number 9, verification when it is happening of your place of business. Even if you are not present, it's okay. Rule number 10A, bank account details to be furnished within 30 days or GSTR1 or furnishing your invoice furnishing facility, whichever is earlier. Okay, sir. Rule number 25, I told you about bank physical verification report done sir suspension now remember if you don't go ahead and furnish your bank account detail as per rule number 10a your registration will be suspended but sir what if before cancellation only i went ahead and put my bank account detail suspension will be revoked and sir revocation whenever your registration is cancelled if you want to apply for revocation 30 days now made 90 days directly further extendable by 180 days Done, sir. Point is clear. That's all was the amendment in the chapter of registration. Done. Now, let's move to the next chapter. The next chapter is exemption ka chapter. Exemption ka chapter mein, what are the various amendments that have come? Let's go ahead and quickly understand. First of all, in your government ka chart, you have to see one new entry has been inserted. What is the new entry? If you are going ahead and providing these services to a governmental authority, if you are providing these services to a governmental authority, then remember water supply, public health, sanitation conversancy, conservancy, sanitation conversancy, solid waste management, slum improvement and upgradation. If these services are provided by you, basically water supply related service, public health related service, sanitation related service, solid waste management related service, slum improvement and upgradation related service. If you are providing to governmental authority, not to anyone governmental authority, then that service shall be exempt. Other than this, now government related services were there, wherein if government is providing services to a business entity, business entity had to pay GST under RCM. Now there, they have gone ahead and told other than Ministry of Indian Railway because I have already told you, Ministry of Indian Railways ka service pay forward charge. Government providing services to a business entity who is small, sir, small business entity, in that case exemption was there. But Indian Railway has been exempted because Indian Railway ka services pay forward charge is there. Government providing to government services, GST was not there other than this services here ministry of railways has been included because ministry of railways ka service also forward charge will come government giving services where the consideration is less than 5000 rupees or up to 5000 exempted other than this services now they have gone ahead and told ministry of railway services also this exemption will not apply forward charge it means what they are trying to say is if you see this government ka chart remember always like post ka services all exemption or forward charge Airport or port related service forward charge, immobile property related service, registered person forward charge, unregistered person, uh, uh, registered person then RCM was there, unregistered person forward charge was there, transportation service forward charge was there, here one more service has been included, Ministry of Indian Railways, Ministry of Railways which is also known as Indian Railways, Central Government ka Department but, 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 
Ministry of Railways giving services to business entity forward charge they will charge. Ministry of uh, Railways giving services to a business entity small business entity still forward charge. Ministry of Railways giving services to go government. Ministry of Railways is under the government. Central government giving to another government still forward charge. Ministry of Railways giving to a business entity where the amount charge is less than 5000 still forward charge because all these services pay now ministry of railways ka services pay forward charge mechanism has been made applicable remember this point yes sir point is clear don't forget this point that ministry of railways ka services brought under forward charge mechanism no more reverse charge mechanism although ministry of railways are under the government but they will charge gst under forward charge but sir tell me one thing railways ka to you had told that if railways are providing non-AC, it is exempt. Baba, whatever was exempted under other entries, like exempt in case of random items, all those what was exempted under other entries will still remain. But in, under these four entries, basically they have gone ahead and told that, sir, government providing to a business entity, business entity used to pay GST under RCM, no more. Indian railways will pay forward charge. They will collect and they will pay. I used to say, sir, whenever government is providing services to a small business entity whose turnover is less than registration limit, less than registration limit, then uh, it will be exempted. But now exemption is not there. Small business entity, still Ministry of Railways will charge under forward charge. Government giving to government, I told it is exempted, but not in post, airport or port, transportation related service. Here they have told Ministry of Railways because Ministry of Railways also forward charge will come. And government where the consideration, government is giving services where the consideration does not exceed 5000, it was exempted. But now exemption will not apply. Always remember, forward charge mechanism mein, Ministry of Railways ka case mein, Ministry of Railways will charge under forward charge mechanism. Other than this, one small entry has come. Wherein they have gone ahead and told satellite launch services by ISRO, Antriksh or NSIL new space india limited only was exempted but now they have deleted this word and told satellite loan service given by isro antrix new space india ramesh sony giving this service anyone giving satellite loan service will be exempt now by any person shall be exempted that's only the crux so sir what is the change in the transportation ka chart i have deleted this word from here it means satellite loan service given by any person whether any private player whether given by government like ISRO, Antriksh, New Space India Limited, anyone will be exempted. Satellite launch services, satellite launching services given by any person shall be exempted. Done, sir. That's all was the change in your exemption ka chart. Please be very careful about it. Let's come to the next one. Tax invoice ka chapter. Tax invoice ka chapter mein one small change which they have gone ahead and done. I hope you guys remember e-invoicing. E-invoicing ke liye limit was 10 crore rupees. But now... For your May 24 attempt, remember invoicing ka limit is 5 crore rupees. It means if you are a person whose turnover in any preceding financial year from 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, 20, 21, 21, 22, 22, 23, any preceding financial year, any preceding financial year from 17, 18, you have to see any year, not together, any year exceeded 5 crore, not 10 crore then you will be liable to do e-invoicing. E-invoicing has to be done. Registered person aggregate turnover in any preceding financial year from 17, 18 exceeding 10 crore now made as 5 crore. Done, sir. Other than that, one circular has come. Sir, what is this circular? Listen. E-invoicing is required whenever you are doing B2B supplies means you are supplying to registered person. If I am going ahead and supplying to a registered person, if I supply to a registered person, then I have to issue e-invoice means I have to go online and register my invoice. This was told. Now, question which was asked is, it's a circular, small circular. Sir, registered person means if government department is registered as TDS deductor only for purpose of deducting TDS, are they also considered registered person? Government told Hey, government department or establishment of government taking registration as TDS deductor are also registered person. So when you are issuing an invoice to any registered person, whether it is government department registered as TDS deductor also, please issue e invoice. That's all is the circular which has come. That's all is told over here that registered person to issue e invoice for supplies to government department even if they are registered as TDS, whether they have taken normal registration, TDS deductor registration, whenever you are issuing invoice to a registered person, you have to go online and 
generate IRN number. Invoice invoice has to be registered. And that's all has been told over here that, sir, whenever registered person with aggregate turnover more than 5 crore issues invoice to government department, governmental agency or local authority or PSU, which are registered as TDS deductor, in that scenario also, that registered person should follow the provision of invoicing. Basically, he has to go online and register his invoice. Done, sir. This tax invoice chapter is done. Time of supply. Time of supply may one small change. Even if you have version 6, please write down this change. Sir, what is the change? Listen. You remember time of supply may forward charge mechanism may I had told you one notification had come which told that in case of goods, you don't have to pay GST under forward charge mechanism on advance. In case of goods, if you receive advance, you don't have to pay GST on advance and hence because of this notification, we only used to see date of invoice or last date to issue invoice, date of receipt of payment, you don't cut anything, date of receipt of payment, we never used to see because notification told that sir, if you are a supplier of goods, you not, don't have to pay GST on advance, correct. But here, you remember specified actionable claim, which I taught you specified actionable claim, lottery, betting, gambling, horses, casino and online money gaming. These six cases are specified actionable claim. And sir, actionable claim means these are goods. Now, supposingly, I am a casino and I have taken an advance from a person. Am I required to pay GST on advance? No, sir, because supplier of goods are not required to pay GST on advance. But, but, they went ahead and told notification number 66 bar 2017 may amendment done. And they told it is not applicable for supplier of specified actionable claim. They must pay GST on advance. Meaning thereby that, sir, if I am a supplier of specified actionable claim, I whenever I am finding out time of supply, I should see all the three date. Date of invoice, last date to issue invoice or date of receipt of payment. Whichever is earlier, I have to pay GST. Meaning thereby that these people have to pay even if they receive any advance. So, sir, can you tell me if I am a supplier of goods, I am to pay GST under forward charge, then what, what date should I see? If you are a supplier of specified actionable claim, which is lottery, betting, gambling, horses, casino and online money gaming, OMG, then remember you have to go ahead and pay GST as per this date of invoice, whatever date of invoice is there. Whatever is the last date to issue invoice, last date to issue invoice, I had always told you, sir, here I told you either on removal, delivery, making available or whenever you issue statement or whenever payment is received. Yes, sir. Or the sir date of receipt of payment, whichever is earlier. But if you are not a specified actionable claim means normal supplier of goods, then for them, they see only date of invoice and last date to issue invoice date of receipt of payment was not required to be followed by them. And Earlier of these two, you have to go ahead and pay GST. That is the time of supply in case of forward charge mechanism. This is the change. Done, sir. This point is clear. Remember this point. And that's all is being told that if you are a supplier of specified actionable claim, which is supply of goods. So, you shall pay at the time of receipt of payment from such supplier by the supply that is on advance also. It means if I am a supplier of goods, actionable claim then i have to go ahead and pay on date of invoice last date to issue invoice or date of receipt of payment whichever is earlier but if i am not a supplier of actionable claim claim other than supplier of go other supplier of goods other than actionable claim then date of invoice or last date to issue invoice date of receipt of payment i don't have to pay any amount on the date of receipt of payment even if that is received in advance so i have to see whichever is earlier in this please be careful about this point we are done with the chapter of time of supply now the next chapter comes is input tax credit in input tax credit no changes at all only one thing block credit block credit may they have inserted one point fa sir what is this fa point going ahead and telling listen you know a company under the companies act has to go ahead and do csr activity 
कंपनीज एक्ट का सेक्शन नंबर 135 इज देयर व्हिच सेज दैट ए कंपनी हैज टू गो अहेड एंड डू सीएसआर एक्टिविटी कॉर्पोरेट सोशल रिस्पांसिबिलिटी नाउ टू डू कॉर्पोरेट सोशल रिस्पांसिबिलिटी फॉर सोशल रिस्पांसिबिलिटी आई विल बाय माइट बी सम गुड्स और सर्विसेज नाउ ऑन दिस विल आई गेट इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट फॉर एन एग्जांपल to do corporate social responsibility a company went ahead and bought some goods to distribute to the under privileged kids etc might be the company is getting some work done for the under privileged and that's a corporate social responsibility which is told under the companies act for companies to do now to do this corporate social responsibility if company buys any goods any services good services or both on that input tax credit will not be available that's all is being told good services which are received by a taxable person basically companies does corporate social responsibility used or intended to be used for activity relating to his obligation under corporate social responsibility remember this itc will be blocked this is one small point in your input tax credit chapter other than that itc chapter there is nothing fa has been introduced done sir this point is clear after that the next one is payment of taxes payment of tax chapter may one circular has come which they have gone ahead and told over here sir what is the circular going ahead and telling supposingly i went ahead and took some input tax credit sir what is the circular telling can you please explain i'll explain you listen carefully itc wrongly availed sir wrongly availed means might be i did not have some invoice only but i went ahead and took the credit you should take the credit only when you fulfill the condition under section number 16 which means you should have the invoice i did not have the invoice i took igst wrongly 1 lakh rupees and might be i had a output tax liability supposingly i had a output tax liability and i also had balance in my e cash ledger in my e cash ledger supposingly uh, i have in my e cash ledger okay output tax liability was there 1 lakh rupees so what i did whatever i have taken wrongly i have used it over here 1 lakh rupees used but in my e cash ledger still there was a balance of igst 50000 cgst 50000 and sgst 50000 means 1.5 lakh already there was a balance i hope you guys remember any itc wrongly availed and utilized you will be liable to pay interest from the date you have utilized it till the date you go ahead and pay it back when you are going ahead and paying it back you have to pay along with interest from here till here i hope you guys remember 18% interest was payable sir this is the wrongly availed itc and used also but but in our payment of taxes chapter we had gone ahead and learned that sir one minute ha huh. you will have to go ahead here everyone interest on itc wrongly availed and utilized shall be calculated from the date of utilization till the date of reversal or payment of tax till the day you go ahead and reverse you have to pay it means i have to pay from the date of utilization till the date of reversal but sir what if i already have a balance in my e credit ledger of 1.5 lakh which is 1 lakh or 1.5 lakh which is igst cgst and sgst put together now if i go ahead and tell you we had gone ahead and learned this rule number 88b in rule number 88b it is written that it will be considered that you have used your credit which you have wrongly availed you have used it only if you are when you read rule number 88b you will see this only if your e credit ledger balance falls below the itc wrongly availed it means it will be considered that you have used the wrongly availed credit you have used it only if e credit ledger balance is below the wrongly availed credit sir i took wrongly 1 lakh rupees theek hai but in my e credit ledger balance if you see even after using 1 lakh rupees i still have 1.5 lakh so can we go ahead and say like this that whatever i i already had 1.5 lakh so sir will it be considered that i have used the wrongly availed credit 
I already have 1.5 lakh. So they are going ahead and telling if here see 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 what they are telling over here in the circular. In case wrongly availed IGST credit by a person and reversal thereof on calculation of interest under rule number 88B, whether the balance of ITC available in the credit ledger under the head IGST only needs to be considered or total IT, ITC balance under the head IGST, CGST, SGST taken together has to be considered. It means you tell me one thing. I have gone ahead. I have gone ahead and ITC wrongly availed is 1 lakh rupees. But my e-credit ledger balance always had total put together more than 1 lakh rupees. So will it be considered that whatever wrongly I had availed the credit, I have used that credit. So they are going ahead and telling it will not be considered that you have used the credit because you already have that much amount of uh, credit lying with the government because when you read rule number 88b rule number 88b says if you took some credit listen carefully rule number 88b is telling this if you took some credit wrongly for an example 1 lakh it will never be deemed that you have utilized it unless unless your e-credit ledger balance falls below 1 lakh so tell me one thing if my e-credit ledger balance put together is always above 1 lakh Will it be ever considered that I have utilized the credit? 1 lakh rupees, okay, I took wrongly. I have used it over here. But they will not consider it as used because you will say, sir, why will I use the wrong credit? I always have balance in my e-credit ledger, which is more than 1 lakh rupees. 1 lakh rupees was always there in my e-credit ledger. I hope this point is clear and hence when you are reversing this 1 lakh rupees, you are paying it back to the government. You don't have to pay any interest. So, I will ask you one more question. Might be if you are confused, you will understand now. For an example, ITC wrongly availed 50,000 rupees. Okay? My e-credit ledger balance is IGST 30,000, CGST 30,000, SGST 30,000. Already my e-credit ledger balance has this. Is there in my e-credit ledger? I wrongly took it. I wrongly took this amount. 50,000 rupees credit. I took on an invoice, but I did not have the invoice. My mistake, I took the credit. Okay. Now, whenever any output tax liability was there, whatever output tax liability was there, Okay, I'll tell you. For example, I took 50,000. So, it became uh, 80,000 rupees over here. My IGST became 80,000. This has 50,000 rupees of wrongfully availed credit, which I should not have taken. Okay. Now, what happened? Now, there was an output tax liability IGST. Okay. For an example, I had an output tax liability of 50,000 in one month. When I was filing GSTR 3B, I took 50,000 ka credit, which should not have been taken, but I took it. So, my IGST balance in the e credit ledger became 80,000. My output tax liability was 50,000. So, IGST should be first paid out of IGST. I used IGST 50,000. Okay. After using 50,000 from here, it became only 30,000. It means I have 90,000 remaining. Okay. My liability I had to pay. So, I used IGST 50,000. My question is, remaining is 90,000 in my credit ledger. Whether later I came to know, no, Ramesh, you should not have taken the credit of 50,000. Please pay it back to the government. I told government I will pay. But do I have to pay any interest? No. Why? Because your e-credit ledger balance never fell below 50,000 which you had taken wrongly. They are telling, see, in case where IGST has wrongly been availed and subsequently you are paying it back, there will not be any interest liability starting from the date of availment up to the date of reversal. No, if balance in the e-credit ledger under the head IGST, CGST taken together has never fallen below the amount of wrongfully availed ITC. I hope this point is clear to all of you. Let's go ahead. Now, okay, I'll ask you. 
ITC wrongly availed IGST 30,000. My e credit ledger after taking this uh, 30,000 rupees ka amount wrongfully availed, my e credit ledger had IGST 30,000 and CGST 20,000. My output tax liability when I was filing my GSTR 3B, IGST supposingly 30,000 was there. This wrong, this is the wrongfully availed credit. I fully used it, 30,000. Now my question over here, how much is the balance in the e credit ledger? Because 30,000 I used it, only 20,000 is remaining. My question is, have I used the wrongly availed credit? Yes, sir. How much? How much? If I supposingly had 30,000 over here, then never I have to pay any interest because my e-credit ledger ka total never fell down. Never fell down than the wrongly availed credit. But here what happened? My CGST was only 20,000 rupees. So I have only 20 because this as IGST, I used it. Now in this scenario, wrongly availed credit and used used over here so the day i utilized it till the date of reversal i have to pay interest at the rate of 18 percent on what amount can you tell me can you tell me how much of the amount which i used 30000 but my balance in the e credit ledger was always 20000 it means they will assume that 10000 by which your e credit ledger balance fell that 10000 is that wrongfully availed credit utilized because you know what would have happened if i would have never taken wrongfully credit what i would have done i would have used this twenty thousand and ten thousand i would have paid in cash it means i would have paid ten thousand in cash it means because of taking the credit wrongly i took wrongly how much 30 so i used thirty thousand. Twenty was already there with me it means how much did I wrongly used? Wrongly used was 30 minus 20, 10,000 and interest at the rate of 18%. The day I filed my GSTR 3B and I used it till the date of reversal, 18% on 10,000 has to be paid. This is what they are trying to tell over here. I hope this point is clear to all of you. You must listen to this again to understand this again and again. I hope this point is clear. Then again, they went ahead and told one more point over here. That sir, one issue was there with respect to GST compensation says, I don't think so at intermediate level, they will talk about compensation says because it is not applicable for you guys. Uh, compensation says they don't go ahead and ask in the exam, but they have given this circular in your uh, CA intermediate ka statutory update. So I'm telling you about this, listen. For an example, In my ITC balance, in my GST e credit ledger, GST compensation says is 50,000. Okay. ITC, I wrongly took when I was filing my 3B, wrongly availed. I filed my credit, I filed my return, and I took wrongly credit. I GST 50,000. So it means I got IGST ka credit 50,000 over here. Might be when I was filing my return, my output tax liability over here was uh, IGST supposedly 50,000 output tax liability. I used this ITC which I had wrongly taken 50,000 and I paid zero to the government. My question over here, do I have to pay any interest? They asked if GST compensation says 50,000 is lying in my e-credit ledger, no? Does it mean my e-credit ledger never fall fell below the ITC wrongly availed? One point which they went ahead and told, GST compensation says can be only used to pay GST compensation says. You cannot use it. You cannot use it to pay your IGST. You cannot use it to pay your IGST. And hence, so supposingly if you did not have this, you could have never used. It means if you had never wrongly availed this, it means you could never use this to pay your output tax liability. 
it means when you had 50000 you could not use it you had to pay 50000 in cash only because compensation says cannot be used to pay igst and hence they are going ahead and telling if itc wrongly availed is 50000 and you have utilized it even though you have balance in your e-credit ledger which is gst compensation says ka balance still you used your igst over here and you paid zero they will say that the day you filed your GSTR 3B, you used the IGST wrongly taken. You took wrong credit. No, you were not block credit. You took it. Why did you take it? Now, the day you used it from the date of utilization till the date of reversal, you have to pay interest at the rate of 18% on 50,000. Even if you have 50,000 rupees credit, which was GST compensation SESCA balance. Because SESCA balance, they don't consider, they don't consider it over here as an e-credit ledger balance, which you could have used for paying your IGST. It was not possible. And hence, they are telling you have to pay interest on 50,000 the day you utilized, the day you reversed, till the date you reversed it. But if you had any other balance, for an example, I had other balances, 90,000 rupees I had balance. But I use wrongly only 50, then they will say you don't have to pay interest, no interest. Sir, I had balance only 20, but wrongly you wrongly use 30. It means your balance fell down by 10,000 rupees, and hence you have to pay interest on 10,000. And but GST compensation says balance is never considered. I hope this point is clear. That's all they have gone ahead and tried. Credit of compensation says shall not be taken while considering the balance of e credit ledger for the purpose of calculation of interest in respect of wrongly availed and utilized gst credit gst compensation says should never be considered done sir point is clear here in the chart there is no change i had kept it so that i can show you rule number 88b that's all please come to your tds and tcs tds and tcs i hope you guys have already gone ahead and seen this chart of uh, TDS ka chart anyways is already there in the additional notes. TCS may nothing Baba in this uh, small chart remember. So if you are a person you went online placed an order on Flipkart. Okay. Flipkart directed it to the supplier. The supplier went ahead and sent the goods to the buyer. He will also give the invoice. You will make the payment. Flipkart will go ahead and deduct TCS. I hope you guys remember 1% TCS Flipkart will go ahead and deduct. Here they had gone ahead and told that Flipkart will collect the TCS. They will take compulsory registration, pay the TCS to the government and file GSTR 8. Now one point which was told that government will make this available on your dashboard. You will have to click saying, ha sir, it is correct and the amount will come in your eCash ledger. Tell me one thing, who has eCash ledger? Only a registered person. So remember one thing. Remember one thing, if you are a person supplying goods or services and your turnover is less than registration limit, you can supply through e-commerce without registration. It means if you are an unregistered person, e-commerce will not deduct TCS only. But if you are a registered person, only then e-commerce will deduct TCS paid to the government. So here they had told made available to the supplier on dashboard. It will be made available to whom? Supplier. Which supplier will get the credit? So here the word supplier has been re replaced with registered supplier. That's all has the change come over here. See, rule number 67 used to talk about TCS ka point where they have gone ahead and told the details of the TCS which has been deducted by the e-commerce shall be made available not to supplier. It shall be made available earlier the word was supplier. Now it shall be made available to registered supplier they are telling because if you are a person who is unregistered, anyways, you will not get credit. Anyways, you will not be going ahead and uh, e-commerce will not be going ahead and collecting TCS anyways. So always remember one thing. This person went and placed an order. Order came to you. You went ahead and supplied. If you are an unregistered supplier of service or you are an unregistered supplier of goods, e-commerce will not deduct TCS. Remember this point. Unregistered supplier ke liye e-commerce does not deduct TCS. Here I have told. If supply is unregistered, TCS will not be deducted. But sir, if supply is registered, then 
e-commerce will take compulsory registration this i have told over here e-commerce has to take separate registration here here sorry e-commerce has to take registration e-commerce will deduct tcs e-commerce will file gstr 8 there e-commerce will say that this 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 supplies were done for which we have collected tcs it will come to your dashboard whose dashboard only registered supplier ka dashboard you will have to click saying ha sir this tcs was deducted and the amount will come to your e cash ledger in this chart only suppliers to be made as registered supplier i hope you have seen the tds and tcs wala chart before completely before coming and seeing these lectures done sir point is clear other than that nothing and sir anyways if the supplies are covered under section number 95 in those supplies also tcs is not applicable these points were anyways discussed Cholo, please come to the next chapter the next chapter is returns ka chapter sir in returns ka chapter was they have gone ahead and done nothing i hope you guys remember rule number 59.6 was there which used to go ahead and say when a person will not be allowed to furnish gstr1 when a person will not be allowed to furnish GSTR1, GSTR1 or make invoice furnishing facility. Here, we had already discussed in class, three points were already there. Along with this, they have gone ahead and discussed two more points. But to understand these two more points, you first have to understand rule number 88D, which I have given in your next page. This rule number 88D, which is there, I have also gone ahead. Uh, this chart... 37 may I have gone ahead and inserted rule number 88D. Let's go ahead and understand about rule number 88D from the chapter first of all. Please come to rule number 88D, page number 36 may. Please come. Now, what is rule number 88D which is going ahead and talking about? Let's understand rule number 88D. Actually, rule number 88D, to be very frank, at CA final level, you understand it in detail. But intermediate level, let's go ahead and understand in a simpler manner over here. Rule number 88D has been inserted, which is talking about difference between GSTR 2B and GSTR 3B. Listen, you know your supplier will go ahead and file GSTR 1. The GSTR 1 will come in your GSTR 2B. For an example, in your GSTR 2B, it is appearing that input tax credit which you can take is only 10 lakh rupees. Okay. When you are filing your GSTR 3B, you can you have an output tax liability of 20 lakh rupees what is the input tax rate 10 lakh so you can't go ahead and take more than the amount which is appearing in your gstr 2b supplier filed gstr 1 that amount came in your gstr 2b you should take input tax credit maximum 10 lakh rupees you know what you did you thought hey remaining 10 lakh to have to pay in cash who will pay in cash i will take input tax credit wrongly you took input tax credit 20 lakh rupees you took it you should have taken only 10 you took 20 so when you take such kind of credit in your gstr 3b you took more credit than what is appearing in gstr gstr 3b you took more credit than what was actually coming in your 2b for this difference you will get one intimation in gst drc see over here gst drc 01c 01c one intimation will come okay now, when this intimation will come, they will tell a hey, notorious boy. Why will they give? Because there is a difference in your GSTR. 2B, what credit you should have taken. And in 3B, what credit you took. You took more credit. So, they will give you a love letter. Intimation. Now, this intimation, when it's, when it's come, then Baba, you will have two options. So, it is telling over here. I have written the summary, which you should be reading. Where the ITC availed in GSTR 3B for a tax period exceeds the ITC in GSTR 2B by such amount and percentage as may be recommended by the council. Council will tell how much more it should be for that you to get a love letter. As of now, you think the council has told that if you have taken more credit than what was appearing in GSTR 2B, the registered person shall be intimated in part A of GST DRC 01 means one intimation will come, letter will come. He shall either pay the excess along with interest using one form which is drc03 one form is there you will learn about this form also in ca final so and furnish the details thereof in part b means pay by using the form drc03 once you pay inform the government using part b in gst drc 01c part a may intimation will come Part B may you will reply. Part B of GST DRC 01C may you will reply. Saying sir, payment done and I am informing you that I have done the payment. Sorry sir. Or, 
और फंडनी से रिप्लाई इनकॉर्पोरेटिंग रीजन वाई एक्सेस आई टी सी रिमेन अनपेड विद इन सेवन डेज और नंबर वन पे Which form to use while making the payment? There is online one form called GST DRC zero three. I'll talk about it in CA final. Okay, either pay and inform the government. So simple, you can remember pay and inform, or just inform. I will not pay. You can tell your reason, sir. It was only coming ten lakh, but I was eligible for twenty. You can inform the reason, or just reply, informing the reason for the difference. Reason. In GST DRC zero one C ka part B only you have to reply. This part B you can use and reply, or when you make the payment also you can inform by using part B of GST DRC zero one C. I have done it. You have to say I have paid the difference, or you reply explaining your reason. It should be done within seven days. Within how many days? Either of this should be done within seven days, or. either pay and inform or just reply whatever you want to tell and you should do it in 7 days if rule number 88d says where any amount has not been paid within 7 days and no explanation is furnished by registered person or where explanation is not found acceptable by the po either you did not pay or you paid and gave explanation paid and gave explanation saying sir half i have paid half i have not paid or whatever you did not pay only and you gave explanation he did not like it officer will get angry over here he will become angry bird not smile he become angry bird and he will be giving you one love letter demand order hey take demand make the payment of the demand otherwise we'll hang you upside down and recover done so sir what is rule number 88d remember i have written in a simpler manner in your chart because at c intermediate level you should remember only this much manner of dealing with difference in 2b and 3b whatever itc you have taken in 3b where the itc availed by registered person for a tax period furnished by him in 3b exceeds the itc availed in 2b whatever was appearing in 2b you took more than that whatever is appearing in 2b you took more than that itc you took then a By such amount and percentage as may be recommended by the council, the registered person shall be intimated. Intimated in DRC zero one. So as of now, you don't have to remember DRC zero one C. You can remember. You will be intimated of such difference on portal and email, highlighting the difference, directing him to pay the excess ITC with the interest or explain the reason within seven days. The registered person can either pay and inform them, along with interest you have to pay. You took wrong. No, the day you took the wrong credit and you used it. From that day till uh, reversal, you have to pay interest at the rate of eighteen percent, or furnish a reply in respect of the excess ITC which has remained unpaid within seven days. Means whatever ITC you took, either pay it off and inform them, or don't pay and give the reason where any amount remains unpaid or where no explanation or reason furnished by the registered person, where you did not pay also, did not give explanation or explanation is not good. You are telling this is my explanation. They did not like. Then they will go ahead and demand the amount. Now, what is rule number eighty-eight D connected over here? What they are telling is, a registered person who has received an intimation under eighty-eight D, in respect of a tax period, might be for a month, shall not be allowed to furnish GST R one or invoice furnishing facility. GST R one next month eleven. Invoice furnishing facility when you are under QRMP scheme by next month thirteenth you have to do. You will not be allowed for the next month. GSTR one also, IFF also, for a sex subsequent tax period, unless he either pays the amount specified, or he gives a reply explaining the reason in respect of the excess ITC that is unpaid. Means if you don't reply within seven days or don't pay the difference which they have told you to pay within seven days, either within seven days you did not pay also, you did not give reason also, then they are telling sir. We will block your GSTR one or invoice furnishing facility from the next month. So this is one more reason when your GSTR one or invoice furnishing facility shall be blocked. Done. One more reason why they are telling your registered person shall not be allowed to furnish GSTR one or invoice furnishing facility if he has not furnished the details of the bank account as per rule number ten A. Rule number ten A went ahead and told you before going ahead and within thirty days of grant. 
or before your first GSTR one or IFF, furnish your bank account detail. You did not furnish your bank account detail. Huh? Notorious boy, not furnishing bank account detail. They will tell over here, your boy or girl, okay? Not the boy or girl, your GSTR one or IFF will be blocked. You will not be able to file GSTR one also IFF if you don't go ahead and furnish your bank account detail. Within 30 days or first GSTR one or IFF, if you don't do it, then they are telling sir provision of rule number 10 a violated now remember and bank account detail and now next month ka gstr1 or iff when you are trying to furnish they will not allow it to you here are the five reason please remember this reason when your gstr1 or invoice furnishing facility will be blocked other than this one more point annual return was exempted for people with aggregate turnover up to 2 crore for 2021 21 22 now this has been told for 22 23 also so for the uh, year 22 23 if your turnover has not crossed 20 uh, if your not turnover has not crossed 2 crore rupees you are not required annual return this point has now been made applicable for the year 22 23 also and rule number 88d introduced which i have already gone ahead and spoken over here that sir whenever there is a difference you will be intimated either pay and inform or just give a reply within seven days if you don't give a reply or don't pay and inform then they all uh, you don't pay or you don't give a reply they are going ahead and telling gstr1 or iff will be blocked plus plus they will also demand this amount from you under rule number 88d we have understood done sir this point is clear now we are done with our chapter of returns over here okay sir this point is clear Earlier, earlier, I think this rule number 88C I had given under payment of taxes chapter. Now, I have written it down over here. It's not a change. This was already explained earlier also. Okay, sir. Now, the last change is in the place of supply ka chapter. Place of supply may, this chart which is there, you guys would have gone ahead and referred to this chart. In this chart, one small change has to be done. Please, let's do it. Rule number, section number 10.1 was there, which used to go ahead and talk about place of supply in case of goods. 10 1 a b c d and e was already there now they have gone ahead and told 10 1 c a under here one c a has been introduced please make this change over here 10 1 c a has been introduced what is 10 1 c a telling listen for an example what is 10 1 c a let's read from here and then understand please come to 10 1 c a please come what are they trying to tell in section number 10 1 c a they are trying to tell where the supply of goods is made to a person other than a registered person means whenever you are supplying to an unregistered person the place of supply shall not withstanding anything contrary to clause a and c means whatever is told over here in clause a and c clause a and c let it be let it be we will just follow 10 1 c a whenever there is a supply which is done Whenever there is a supply which is done to an unregistered person, basically for an example, you came from Delhi to me in Karnataka. I have a shop in Karnataka. You are from Delhi. You came to my shop. You are an unregistered person. Okay. I gave you the phone in the shop of in my shop. Delivery happened in my shop. Risk and reward transferred in my shop. Place of supply will be Karnataka only because I am in Karnataka. I gave you the mobile phone in the shop. Place of supply is the delivery location. Karnataka, I will charge you CGST, SGST. Government told, see, whenever you are, now 10-1-C to told where the delivery is happening, that is the place of supply. But they told over here, please, whenever unregistered person who are supplying over the counter, for over the counter sales, please follow 10-1-C-A if you are supplying to an unregistered person. So, if supposingly one person from Delhi came to Karnataka, told me, Ramesh sir, I want a mobile phone. Then remember, the place of supply, if address of the person is recorded in the invoice. So, if that person tells me, Ramesh sir, I am from Delhi, the place of supply will be Delhi, I will charge him IGST. But if address is not recorded, if address is recorded, then location as per address. If address is not located, not given, then location of the supplier. I will give you an example. I am a shopkeeper in Karnataka. You are from Delhi. You came to my shop in Karnataka. 
you told you might have come for a visit or might be on a tour and you saw that in my shop you wanted a buy my mobile phone location of the supply is karnataka i gave you the mobile phone in karnataka 101 c if applied the place of supply is the delivery location where risk and reward is given so i should charge you cgst and sgst but they told if this person who is coming from delhi is an unregistered person ask him the state he told his state is delhi location of supplier is karnataka then the place of supply will be where whatever address he has given and i should charge supplier and place of supply is different state i should charge him igst sir he did not tell me where is he coming from if he did not tell location of supplier is karnataka the place of supply will be my location only karnataka and i'll charge him cgst and sgst that's all they are telling and you know what you don't have to take his address everything not required recording the name of the state of the person shall be deemed to be recording the address if i record the name of the state that's it that's it that will be the place of supply so remember this point and they have given one example also there may be cases where unregistered person purchase goods over the counter in a state and thereafter transport it to another state generally the state where he reside now destination is that state right when you came to karnataka and you took the phone to delhi destination is delhi igst ka cgst central government sgst portion should go to delhi government no and hence they have gone ahead and got this clause for instance migrant worker tourist come to a state for work tourism and purchase goods in that state and take it to respective state might be in automobile the resident of a state may travel to another state for from that state to take advantage of low registration charges and road tax which may vary state to state and thereafter take the vehicle to their state might be one person from delhi came to karnataka he took a car now he is taking it to delhi because road tax was less in karnataka he bought it from karnataka and now he is taking to other state remember ask him his address, address. if he says i am from delhi record in the invoice just the name of the person uh, address as delhi and you are from karnataka he is from delhi that becomes the place of supply you should charge him igst simple clarification since gst is a destination tax now provision introduced so that the tax can be transferred to the appropriate state where the consumption is happening that's all done sir this point is clear after that they have given clarification on place of supply in case of advertisement sector this both i will go ahead and explain it to you listen carefully here i am not going ahead and written in thing because these are two circulars which are in addition please listen sir what are these circular going ahead and talking listen to me carefully over here for an example this is one advertisement company pogo theek hai pogo came and told me ramesh sir you have a holding ka board over here this holding belongs to me i am a vendor i have this boarding holding board pogo came and told me sir sir this holding which is there can you give the right to use this holding right to use the holding to us means can you allow us to use this holding you will see you know in the holding numbers are written you can call them and take the holding on rent so what i did i gave the holding to them on rent or might be i gave the holding for them to use it or might be i sold the holding in this scenario for an example location of supplier i am located in karnataka i gave the holding to them to use people asked when you are giving a holding to someone might be this is attached to the earth or it is attached to a building it's an immoval property can you think whenever it's an immoval property place of supply which rule will apply sir services in relation to immoval property always remember location or intended location of the property boat vessel always remember where the property is located that will become the place of supply can you tell me sir when i give him the right to use or i allow him to use i give it on rent to him the place of supply will be as per section number 123 that is where the holding is located so if holding is also located in karnataka i am also in karnataka this person ko when i am giving the bill i will charge cgst and sgst i hope this point is clear to all of you that's what they are telling over here see there may be case where in the supply of space or supply of right 
not the holding space which is there i have given it to him for him to use or supply of right to use the space on a holding or structure which is an immovable property baba anything attached to the earth is immovable holding is an immovable property okay belonging to a vendor to client advertisement company for display of their advertisement on the holding or structure what will be the place of supply provided by the vendor to the advertisement company they are telling supply of space on holding given by vendor to advertisement company is right to use an immovable property hence section number 123 shall apply and the place of supply shall be location where such holding or structure is located so sir if i am a person this holding belongs to me he told sir in the holding advertisement company told might be supposingly tatas want some advertisement from us so we will do the holding may we will put tata ka name tata t and we want to do the holding we want the uh, holding from you they they did not tell me to go ahead and do any advertisement they told me that sir you give the right to use the holding to us so when i give him the right to use simple as that holding is an immovable property section number 123 will apply i am in the karnataka holding is karnataka i will charge him cgst and hgst i hope this point is clear to all of you in the next one i will go ahead and tell you for an example there is an advertisement company advertisement company came and told me i am a vendor they told sir can you do advertisement for us they told we have got a contract from tatas tata want tata tea ka advertisement so we have charged them 10 lakh rupees i will give you 8 lakh rupees can you go find out holdings and on the holding tata tea ka advertisement can you do might be this person does not have a holding but he took advertisement ka contract from me and he told sir i will only go do the printing of the canvas everything i will get it printed and i will give you advertisement service in this scenario he is not giving me holding on rent he will also he might have a holding of his own he might he will get the matter printed he will do the holding for one year supposingly i gave him the contract see in the first one he gave me the holding structure on rent that was immovable property given by someone to me on rent i will go ahead and do the advertisement but in the second one i gave him the whole advertisement ka contract in this scenario he will go ahead and find out holding he will take holding on rent from someone he will get all the printing work done and he will give me advertisement services in this scenario what section will be applicable they say there may be another case where the advertisement company wants to display its advertisement on hoardings billboard at specific location availing the services of a vendor the responsibility of arranging the hoarding billboard lies with the vendor who may himself own the structure or may take it on rent for use basis from another person the vendor is responsible for displaying of advertisement of the advertisement company at the said location during the entire time the display of advertisement the vendor is in possession of the holding baba this holding was never given to me no 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 it was never given to me right to use nothing i told him hey you do the advertisement for me he told okay i will do the advertisement so i will give you the advertisement service remember when this guy is giving me the advertisement service here general rule 122 will apply because he is not giving me any immovable property on rent over here and sir location of supplier supposingly is karnataka this vendor is from karnataka he is giving me advertisement services section number 122 says whenever and the, at the time uh, and the advertisement company is not occupying in this case what will be the place of supply so they are telling general rule will apply sir i hope you re remember general rule that sir if it is given to registered person so if supposingly advertisement company is a registered person location of the registered person sir advertisement company is from maharashtra for an example the place of supply will be maharashtra and i will go ahead and charge igst to i hope this point was clear to all of you i'll tell you once again listen i am an advertisement company i got advertisement ka contract from tatas tatas told me to do advertisement when i am giving them advertisement service माई एडवर्टाइजमेंट सर्विस के लिए तो जनरल रूल ट्वेल्व टू विल अप्लाई आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस आई एम टॉकिंग वन आई टेक द एडवर्टाइजमेंट का होर्डिंग ऑन रेंट फ्रॉम सम वन ही इज गिविंग मी होर्डिंग ऑन रेंट इमोवेबल प्रॉपर्टी ऑन रेंट वेर द बेग बैनर आई कैन पुट इट तो दिस होर्डिंग वेन समबडी गिव्स मी ऑन रेंट ही इज गिविंग मी इमोवेबल प्रॉपर्टी एंड प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई विल बी एज पर सेक्शन नंबर ट्वेल्व थ्री
I hope this point is clear. And 12.3 says, wherever the immobile property is located, that will be the place of supply. Supplier Karnataka, immobile property, suppose this holding also in Karnataka, the place of supply will be Karnataka and he'll charge me CGST and GST. But supposedly, I am giving advertisement service and in turn, I am taking advertisement service from someone. Then that guy, when he gives me the advertisement service, general rule, when I give the advertisement service, again, general rule only. When I will give the billing to Tata, I will also charge GST. Location of supplier Maharashtra, supposingly Tata is also, also from Maharashtra. So place of supply will also be Maharashtra because location of recipient applying general rule. And I will charge CGST and SGST on my bill. He will go ahead and charge me. Supposingly he is from Karnataka and I am from Maharashtra. So he will charge me. IGST. I hope this point was clear to all of you. The same thing has been told over here. This two circular is an addition which is there. Other than that, place of supply, whatever the video has been uploaded is completely amended. Only 110 CA point you have to insert and this two advertisement wala point which I have explained to you. Please be very careful. When I take holding on rent from someone, Holding is immovable property. He is giving me services in relation to immovable property. When I take advertisement service from someone, then that guy is giving me advertisement service which is falling under section number 12.2 general rule. I hope this point was clear to all of you. Done sir, done. Point is clear. We are done with all the amendments which are applicable for your May 24 exam over here. Now a small point which we had left in the chapter of Composition, I'll go ahead and cover that also. In composition scheme, section number 10.2D and section number 10.2C has been amended. Now they have gone ahead and told if there is a person who is supplying goods or service through e-commerce, goods or service through e-commerce where the e-commerce is going to deduct TCS, they have told those people will be ineligible. Here they have deleted the word goods, meaning thereby that if you are a supplier of goods, they have deleted the words goods over here. Meaning thereby, if you are a supplier of goods and the e-commerce is directing TCS also for you, okay, still you will be liable to go ahead. You will be eligible to go ahead and supply through e-commerce. Means supplier of goods through e-commerce where the e-commerce is directing TCS still will be liable to go ahead and supply through the e-commerce operator. That's all is the point over here. Remember this point. Even if you are a supplier of goods through e-commerce, you will be eligible to opt for composition scheme supplier of services through e-commerce where the e-commerce deduct tcs supplier of services are ineligible supplier of goods shall be eligible to supply through e-commerce even if the e-commerce is directing tcs that's all is the change over here goods word has been deleted that's all so here i'll go ahead and close my discussion on all the amendments i've gone ahead and covered till your place of supply composition ka chart also i've gone ahead and covered now that's all Baba from my end with respect to composition you can go ahead and join the telegram group CA Ramesh Sony GST inter in this group uh, all the updates are being provided whenever any new videos etc come the updates are being provided so you can join this telegram group for updates also uh, if you have any query you can drop me a whatsapp or telegram on 7259276368 and i'll help you with the query which you have done baba done i hope you guys enjoyed the amendments please make a change in your chart book regarding all the amendments and please do let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed the revision if you enjoyed the amendments love you all take care all the best for your exam Keep revising, study the amendments at least two to three times so that you in detail understand the amendment. Love you all. Take care. Bye guys. Do hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel.